uh, Mike check one two Wednesday Twitch TV slash Conspiracy Horseman live. Three of us, three of the four, maybe a run in a little while. You guys uh, from GGP, but he had some uh, dad stuff to do, so he's uh, you know being a Ronin World Champion, a Father World Champion, and probably the Cub Scout Universal Champion before the night's all He could fucking whoop any of them kids. <laughs> so. Uh, you're here with uh, Big Sal, Hacker Hameen, and Stevie Cool. We'll get to it tonight. It's been kind of a crazy week. As uh, a lot of you guys know, we'll, we'll dive right into it here uh, in just a minute, infidels, because I breaks it down to the bone gristle. Ill-speaking scud missile, heat seeker, Johnny blazing, nightmares like Wes Craven, infidels gunning, my third eye seen it coming before it happened. You know about them fucking horsemen kids. We smashing everything, huh, in any shape, form, or fashion. Now everybody talking about they blasting, hmm, is you buster stealing, is you gassing, hmm, talking out your asshole, and we're not going to have that anymore, infidels. No more talking out your ass, no more stooge reports, because tonight the heat's coming down. I know these guys are hot as hell, and Hacker Hameen's got the shoot to lay down on you, infidels. So stand back, get down, duck, and cover, because the conspiracy horsemen are here with the censorship of Hacker Hameen. YOLO! <laughs> Fuck you. Yes. Yes, yeah, a lot of infidels this might be a hot one tonight. We're going to get to your gender-neutral messaging system messages, but uh, definitely want to get right to it because uh, my head's all over the place tonight uh, since, since yesterday when uh, my man right here, he actually is the one with the first stooge report, told me that uh, all of my messages disappeared from our conspiracy horseman heels over strong chat. And, uh, you know, that, that they definitely gave me the Iggy, and I was like, holy shit, something bigger than – what I'm understanding is going down right now with Hacker I mean, but it's my man, the, the number one stooge, Stevie Richards. What's going on, bro? Uh, if I was the number one stooge, <laughs> I'd still be in WWE. That's I'd be going on my like 20th <laughs> year. No, I, I was shocked because we, we just the, the, most of our main communication throughout the day and how to do a lot of our show, I guess what you call them, show notes, yeah. we, we are going throughout the whole thing, 24 hours a day in Facebook Messenger, using social media for what it's supposed to be for, communicating and trying to get – information across to, to to each other and i i got i sent you a message and you sent me one back and then three things in a row saying that this message is either spam or hate speech and i was like what yeah. and i sent a screenshot to everybody in the group chat <clears throat> and it was just like this is so weird and you you were gone i sent you a text and they, they didn't hack the heck verizon or or t-mobile or at&t yet so we were able to get that through at least for now and uh you're not the only victim. It's so strange how now the dominoes are kind of falling all over the, the truth seekers. It is uh, insane right now, man. Uh, whether I thought it was just something small. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to break here real quick because Twitch uh, chat rooms tell me to pump, real, pump, real low. pump the faders. I got them up as high as I can go here. I feel like I'm really hot right now. Uh, but they're saying it's very low. I can hear you. You're pretty high to me. Yeah, man. Yeah. On our side, you sound like real or high, but it has to be OBS, I would assume. Is it, I think. Let me double check here. Oh, it's, it's, everything is going to fuck with us. No, huh? you're right. You're right. It was OBS. OBS with uh, restarting my computer set itself back to 50%. <clears throat> so my, my audio is good on uh, on what we're recording. So, no, you, you know, if you need that audio file, let me know. And thank you, Brent Logan, for uh, sharing 100 bits. Yeah, man. Better, thank you. Yeah, you guys, that was OBS. Yeah. My fault. It's a fifty percent. So, uh, if you need to hear my rap again, just go back and listen to Jizzer Shadow Box and Method Man's verse. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's been uh, a crazy week. Sorry, Stevie, you had put it back to me. Uh, I didn't want to avoid your question there. What was uh, what was your point? I mean, you had, you had stooged off to me. I was picking up uh, the king of sod from the airport uh, from his uh, oil seeking trip to Alaska, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, uh, they, th I, that was the first I had heard of it, man, when I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I, I tried to load Messenger, and I just got a white screen. Well, I mean, it, it was just a strange thing. Like, I'll just repeat that, you know, when you were replying to my message, which was pretty much, you know, there was no, there was like a couple minutes between when I sent you the message and when that came in. So yeah, whatever they were doing, and because you were messaging the group not too long before that too, right? So whatever happened, it was within a span of an hour of that 
And then this 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 notification I got about spam or mm. or hate speech. I was like, but Ben wouldn't send. You know, we we send goofy stuff through the through the group message. But my first thought was, there's nothing he's going to send me. I mean, and they're, if they're monitoring our messages, I thought, oh mm. my god, like now you're going to say you were too mean to your person in the group message. We're going to ban you. Like yeah. there's no end to to this insanity at this point. Yeah, great Susan my, Susan Powder first reference. thought. First thought was that it was a rib, because the hate speech. I was like, "Wait, what?" And then I realized Stevie sent it, and not you. Because like, if you would have sent it, yeah, I, I, like, I never oh, saw that. Balls. But the fact that Stevie sent it, I'm like, he wouldn't send out a hate speech thing. I just thought it was funny, and then I realized it wasn't a fucking joke. You were gone. Yeah, no, I mean, so so let, let me, yeah, appreciate it. And the the lovely voice and face you hear at twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman is that of none other than a young King Kong Bundy himself, uh, Big Sal. Uh. <laughs> That's a picture, that. He's okay. chewing on the picture board in the Twitch room. Oh, yeah, man, dude, that, 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 that picture of Bundy looked just like you, man. It was creepy yeah. how much it and looked And it was like. funny because, here, right, so I see that. I was out with my wife and I see it and I go, <laughs> she goes, what? I go, look. She goes, is that you? I go, you're. What's wrong with you? Is that me? <laughs> like seriously, dude. Like, it it looks a not, lot like you. No, Sam. it does not look it, like. It me. looks like you. This is gonna sound weird. The way you look from when I first met you in in whatever it was ninety eight when we were in November to remember, and I was just a mark in the crowd, um, and we did that thing at Buff Broadway Markets. If you look at the yeah. you okay. then versus yeah. your yeah. face now. Dude, it could be two different seven footer big dudes. Like it, you look very drastically different. But now, like if I was to say, "Oh, that's sale twenty years ago," and I saw that picture, it would be completely <laughs> believable. That, you know, so it was awesome, man. That was a, that was a great find out there. I can't remember who was the first one to find it, but uh, good job, Hot Mean Media Discussion Group, on that one. But uh, yeah, man. Just uh, to recap, so what happened? Uh, like I said, I was going to pick up the king at the airport, and uh, you know, Stevie hits me up, and the only thing I had posted that morning was for one of my Hameen Media clients, because Dennis Rodman's coming to town, so we're promoting that uh, for a big meet and greet there. And then a memory came up of a Hameen uh, where it was uh, George Bush and Michelle Obama hugging. Like she's embracing him and just pro wrestling tees.com slash Ben Hameen on there. Uh, you know, just a great picture. And, you know, it says so much. I don't even need to say anything. It just drives that spike home. And that's all I posted that morning. So nothing salacious. Right. Yeah. And, and like, dude, not even if somebody were usually reports something that they don't like, I don't like this. Why it's because of whatever. Right. Yeah. Fucking snowflake reason. Um, you know, they usually put you in suspension or jail for 24 hours. And I, I don't think I haven't been Facebook suspended in like two years. This is a complete 1984 Orwell unperson. <laughs> you never existed. 12 years of wrestling picks, you know, all my conversations, all your business clients, just whew, with a flip of the switch, completely gone. And I don't want to sound megalomaniacal, but like, Dude, that's a that's what they did to Alex. What five weeks ago? And now Crow believes he's controlled opposition. Other people do, but even if it was, did that set a standard for what they did to me? Is it that big, or does the scale go super small? I don't know yet, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, now, uh, like uh, the fact that they took down, but because didn't they didn't they fuck you once before for the Braun panties match? They on YouTube. Uh, right? They they Wasn't flag that? yeah they they flag me they for flagged it. You? I mean I have nine thousand nine hundred eighty one subscribers. I checked before we came on today on YouTube, and that Braun and and ten million views, seven point five maybe even eight million of those now are that Braun panties match, dude, and they're all like Saudi right. Arabia, Yemen, like <laughs> dudes who are so and, and it, you know who's in that is uh, Melody and. Uh, uh, Sojo, what's her? Uh, you know, um, she was Sojo Bolt in, in, in Impact. So, um, you know, that like, dude, you know, girls who were in our system and good friends of ours, Josie. Right, I don't like, want. I don't want to do the fact that, but Josie. The fact that they flagged you for it, right? Two times. Now, so I got two strikes. Right. One more. So channel's you took done. it down, and, the, and you went, and they went. You went back up, and everybody was happy. Well, no, I didn't take it down. I just demonetized it. And like to me, that's just okay. That's how it started. We were all, we were all like, oh, what the fuck, ah, blah blah blah. 
Now, at the same time, Stevie got demonetized too, wasn't it? Right. Because she put up uh, Wolfgang shit. I just put up Conspiracy Horseman episodes. That's where we were putting them for about maybe two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. They demonetized every video, tech, fitness, just down the line. And when I removed those videos, they remonetized all the videos. Right, like miraculously. So that little, the little hiccup, the little test to see, okay, let's see what's happening here. And then all of a sudden, now, now you're fucking gone completely. And then, now did you saw, you saw what happened to Big Ray too. Yeah, I want to get to that fucking, too. So yeah. that that changes oh, the scope fuck. of that changes the scope of what this could be. But there's probably five avenues I kind of want to run down of from the simplest to the like. All right, now we're getting out there. But with what happened to Ray, puts us on the outer realm of things. So um, very interesting. But uh, Stevie, you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to say too, because I have two atheists on the RN, but still, <laughs> the belief, the belief of, the belief that this market of beast stuff or whatever you call it in the Bible, it's still a matter of, hey, if you do something we don't want you to do, we're gonna starve you. You're a direct example of that because you use social media with your clients. It's the basis. That's my of whole business. That's my entire exactly. business. Exactly. <laughs> so they know that. Or they don't know that, but they they don't make an educated guess if the, you're going to come back in line, because you got to be thinking like, oh man, you could create another account or do whatever, go around it, but whatever traction or whatever else, like Stevie Richards Fitness, if I lost the the capability to post to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even any kind of stuff online, say YouTube, even, I where where am I at? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of Russo is a bigger one. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, you're talking about. Uh, nobody even knows why he's offensive anymore, mm. but it's just Russo. You know, we gotta we gotta take him off the air, and they complain. They're trying to starve him out too. So, in essence, it's a it's just a cultural type of oppression. It's a not sure. it's it's Nazism. It's just Nazis. Yeah. You know, they're calling they're calling people that are Nazis. And this, that's it, that's what I think. Yeah. That's the thing that fucking pisses me off is that these assholes who throw the word Nazi around for every little bullshit. Ben Hameen's a Nazi. Uh, fucking Vince Russo is a Nazi. They throw that shit around, and then something like this comes and happens, and, and, and you know what? All they're going to do is go, yeah, he deserved it. He deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> really? Really? Because now that's this is not being a Nazi, getting thrown off for no, no fucking reason because somebody didn't like what you said at some point, at some time, that they don't even have to be accountable for. This faceless fucking cunt, whoever it is, is like, oh, okay, cool. I'm just going to say I don't like it, and now... This is going to affect you on a different on different levels. So, yeah. like, it's fucking ridiculous to the fact that th these people are the same ones who would bitch if it happened to any you know on, on any other level. If it happened to somebody they you know that that was direct. Like, again, I don't want to start calling people out, but today, the, oh, who cares? It's just Facebook. No, man, fuck that. Fuck, it's just Facebook. Like, you know, because tomorrow like it's just down, something else. Tomorrow shit goes down yeah. like that, man. Yeah, exactly. When they, and and again, I don't want to fucking quote the other bullshit with uh, when I came for me, there was nobody there. Okay, because it's a little over dramatic for this. But at the same time, fuck that. Like they're gonna do something like that. You, you don't let it slide and go. Oh well, fuck it. It's just Facebook. Fuck it. You go burn that shit down and let them go fucking rebuild. And then you know, start from the jump. You know, like I know the architect that can do that. Ugh. <laughs> the part of GGP will be played by Stevie Richards. Uh, I, dude, what you're saying is just it's just nuts to think that these kind of people, isn't there something in the basis of society, especially if you're talking about the American Constitution, if you're talking about our republic, democracy, whatever you want yeah. to call it, this free society where you have a right to face your accuser? That has been nope. a complete 180. With the Not Kavanaugh stuff, with everything that's going on, when someone accuses you, they become the protected individual. Right. They're the victim. So They're the victim. Bin Hameen insulted someone at some point. Bin Hameen hurt somebody's feelings. Bin Hameen posted a video that people chuckled at, and he's talking about jumping a border. <gasps> that's unsafe for everybody. Yeah. All right, what so fuck? That's, those are great points. So that, that kind of takes us down Avenue A, which is in a smaller scope. Was it something I did? 
I posted because I couldn't make uh, the <clears throat> unfortunately I couldn't make it to Crossfire to go up there and whip the shit out of Cody Deaner and uh, uh, the, all of uh, Chris Laplante's little uh, stooges up there with uh, my Jay Moore faction with you know Congo Kong and and Phil Atlas. But you know it, it's just that. I, I cut this video to make it look like, you know, I'm searching. I, the plants had me banned from the border crossing. So is it something like that that somebody didn't like or it was ribbed on? Or another post, you know, I post in uh, Hami Media Group, uh, I want to kill, I'm going to kill Spectrum. Now, that's not a threat to anybody directly. Like, yeah, I'm hot about internet. Like, what else gets posted on the internet, right? So I'm just thinking of salacious things, right? If anybody, and that was in a hot mean media discussion group, so who's going to report me in my own discussion group? Chances are pretty I slim. Think of one guy who could probably <laughs> fucking report you because he's a giant fucking twat. Yeah. But, you know, so it, it's it's there. But so is it as simple as one person offended wants to pull a satin on Russo type shit and fuck with me? That, to me, unless Facebook's changed their fuck you guidelines, would put me in Facebook jail. You know what I mean? For 24 to 72 hours, whatever it is. This is way more. This is a complete vaporization of my digital profile. I mean, even when you look up, I don't come up anymore. You can tag. But, like, when I would go to log in, it just says your profile is completely disabled. If you think this is in vain, go do this bullshit where they send them your number and, and say why in a screenshot of like, well, what am I supposed to fucking screenshot? It says I'm fucked. Okay, great. Right. Um, you know, so is it that simple of somebody cunting off? I don't know because unless they change their practices, I would still have ability to log in and see what was going on. I just couldn't post on anything, right? This, I'm completely gone. So now that leads me down. Is it a bigger crackdown, like Stevie was putting over, of our First Amendment rights, of, of what's actually going on, and, and them just you know taking things away, and poof, you're gone. We saw it with Alex, and as you brought up, Big Ray just posted before we went on the air that after he did a hashtag that Strangler Steve actually started, hashtag Free Ben Hameen, which I, I, you know, I love and appreciate all you guys and all my producers, all my co-hosts, and, and, and have my back as I know you would, because if they got hacker, guess what? You're one degree of separation away, so everybody's assholes a little puckered. But, uh, you know, now they got Ray, too, because of just a post on Twitter. Nothing salacious. Nothing like fuck you, Facebook. Um, you know, da 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 da. Hey, shout out to the Theory Girl. Just cheer us a thousand, uh, cheering, uh, flaming unicorn horns. I'm gonna go with. Um, so, but uh, we That's appreciate. That's offensive. You're you're banned from Twitch now. Oh fuck. We got a few more Twig cheers too. We got Smokey Baker. We got, uh, of course, Brent Logan. We have XR Butcher. And we have Dirty Turnbuckle who cheered us a bunch of rainbow flags. You guys, so, are, you guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah we we can get ahead. bits now if you guys weren't here last week. We were approved. And shout out to Geppetto who gave us ten thousand last week. We do, we do hit us up at conspiracyhorseman at gmail dot com. Send us your address, man. We want to send you something nice. That was a huge donation, uh, our first time out, and that was just awesome. I know I don't think he's in right now, but. Uh, Geppetto, if you're listening to this later, man, we definitely want to do something back nice for you, bro. We appreciate that. So, you know, to get back to it, that's where the next level of this is of like, is this a bigger conspiracy now that they're going within the one degree of separation of co-hosts? Ray gets locked out of Twitter. I'm not locked out of Twitter at all by any way, shape, or form. And I've been, you know, retweeting and reposting things. This is really fucky because – Let's remember Twitter was the last one to kick Alex Jones off. The only reason they did that is because he got up and jacked whatever the fuck's face at the at the hearings there. And then that happened. When Alex got kicked out the first five. Ruby, Rubio, I think, wasn't it? Uh, well, he did that he too, but, but that was he was there at the same time. And the CEO of Twitter was there, and he caught a promo on him next day to his face. Next day he was gone. <laughs> so... You know, the, this is what we warned about of changing the dialogue on, oh, let's get some get back on somebody they banned and we'll ban their person. Then uh, we've already lost the fight of First Amendment of you can say whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? No matter how shock factor, satire or whatever it is. And I didn't even really do anything to instigate it. It was just Kaiser Soze, whew, 
gone. You know. Yeah. And and then and that's you know what uh, Jeffy Punchachik, whatever the fuck his name is in here said, arbitrary censorship's going on for a bit. It's not a conspiracy. It's in our face. We've been talking about it the whole time. We just never thought it was going to come down to you know. And, I guess and we did. Fast. We did thought it was going to come down to this, but now it's affecting directly. Yeah. So now it's like holy shit. But but the frustrating thing is, and you know, he's all calm and shit now. We should have seen Big Sally Balls when I fucking call him <laughs> up for the first. We go on about fifteen minutes before the show. Maybe we should charge for that and do a, a TVMA version. But uh, that's probably the, our Patreon. If we yeah. do it, but but we're rocking and we're doing yeah. better. Oh, you want to talk about payments though? Just really quickly while I'm thinking about it, they also banned Alex Jones from PayPal. So that is some yeah, straight yeah. up straight up starvation. I I literally yeah. like now every time you think about a Patreon, a PayPal, uh credit card processing, any of these other things, Stripe, which I use through my site, who's to say this isn't the beginning? And if it is controlled opposition, if nobody's gonna come to Alex Jones defense, whether they like him or not, that could be the litmus test to say, oh, we can we can push it a little further. We can go with somebody that they might like a little bit better, but they don't love. Yeah. And then we can make up all these reasons as we go along. And then as they see it happen to more people, it shuts more people up. All you need is a few really hard examples to shut Nancy Browns up, who might even become one of us. They, right. they go right back to being Nancy Browns. Absolutely. It's a very, uh, this will date me and uh, make us all feel old, but kind of that pump up the volume FCC regulation <laughs> part of the storyline, right? And uh, shout out to Armand2700. You put, you put all in caps, you deserve it in the chat room. So if, I'm not sure if that's to me, but if that's a dig on me, that's pretty fucking funny. That was a good, you deserve it. Uh, I'll take that one. Um, uh, but yeah, man, I, that's the thing. I don't want to come off like Alex got banned and Hameen got banned. Look at him. He's controversial too on that level because I didn't do anything, uh, in that window of like where an algorithm would catch something that would be fucked up or a stooge would, you know, put something over as I don't like this and, and then get put in Facebook jail with the way this unhappened, unpersoning happened. And, and now with Ray, it begs the question: Well, what are we looking at here? Right. You know, what are we, what are we, what are we seeing next? And it's, and it's, you know, it's not even a, a Facebook jail, like to say, "All right, Ben, well, you're banned for thirty days. Here you go." It's the fact that everything is just fucking gone. No, no answers. And none. You no know answers. what I mean? Like it's just, it's, it's fucking ridiculous that to that level, just everything. And again. Uh, without getting into details and everything, all your fucking, pe all your pictures, all your, all gone. your accounts, everything you had done. Yep. Without any fucking warning, no backup, nothing. Just go fuck yourself. We decided it's gone. Picks of my, picks of my dog that passed uh, fucking, you know, our, our time in, in OVW together a decade ago, as they come up on show 1000 right here, like, you know, old Serena, you know, like young Serena, I should say. And not that she's you know old I mean? now, but like. But it's like, it's just the fact that there there is no, everybody, the little, oh, it's a badge of honor. You got banned from Facebook. No, you didn't get banned from Facebook. You were fucking deleted from Facebook. Yeah, yeah. You know, this isn't the same thing. This isn't, oh, in 30 days, you'll be back, buddy. Yeah. You're fucking gone. Just gone. They, just, they took they took everything. It's it's like legit. Right? They just kicked you out of the house, and you're just out in the in the cold. But, you know, they obviously I hack back. I'm Hacker Hameen. I created – I used right. my uh, my infidel Mark character that I hate doing, my, the, the worst character I do, Ben Doer, and made an account <laughs> that way. He's such a fucking – douchebag that no one wants to friend him but you know i have to do it for the hameen business side but even the hameen media the legit business the media group stuff is there thankfully that's matt schaffer and adam rivera and those guys with the hameen media discussion group they're all admins big ray so they can add me back in which is a good fail safe but i had my legit business site that's gone too you know, in, in, in legit, the time it takes to flip a light switch. So, it, you know, the bigger attack, the starvation, uh, they haven't kicked me off a of, Hey pal. Oh yet, shit. But, wait uh, a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. Why don't you just back up your pics on Facebook to your PC? That's 
dog welder nine. He nailed it. Why do you, well, you I, do that? Yeah, I, I did do that to, to 80% of them. You know, oh, I, I have a lot. All right, good. Well, that's, that's some advice you should have done. I, I didn't. I'm glad. Hey, where were, dog welder, where were you when, <laughs> right before this happened? God damn the it. The point is, there was no fucking warning. Like, yeah. there was, nobody knew this was going to happen. Like, he woke up and was like, hey, today's a normal day like any other fucking day. <laughs> yeah. Yep, just do, doing business, uh, posting about Dennis Rodman coming for an autograph. Uh, shout out to Triple D in the chat room. Gave us a 1,000 bits. Thanks, brother. And uh, he also added me back on the Dippin' Donuts account under uh, Ben Dewar as an admin. So nice you'll shot. keep getting your Dippin' Donuts posting. Cider, hot and cold the cider is available now at Dippin' Donuts. It's apple season, guys. Get over there. Dippin' Donuts, three locations, New Hartford, two in Rome, New York, one on Erie Boulevard, one on Black River Boulevard. Uh, is the Dick Bills commercial coming next? <laughs> or, I'm just checking. We got gar, gar, uh, garbage ads, garbage edge. Is that um? That's yeah, oh, geez. Yeah, 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 I know exactly. We got 200, 200 bits. We also have uh, let me see here. The mid Domino 815, 45, and uh, of course Demetrius Zordos with a uh, thousand. So yeah. good stuff. This is. <clears throat> This is something I'm. I, I, I. This is new for Facebook though, because this is something usually on Twitter they put you in Twitter jail. This has been a recurring thing, with Twitter, and then the banning of Alex Jones and banning of other people. I have no doubt that Ray, Ray, maybe he'll come back in 11 hours, like he said he would at the time when he was locked out. But who knows? And who knows if they're going to shadow ban him to where people can't see what he's tweeting right. or doing anything right. like that. I retweeted you too, Ben. So it'd be a very interesting to find out if they look at me and they say, well, this guy's got 41, 42,000 followers. Let's get him out of here because we see 10 retweets in a month that are that are not in line with what we agree with. Yeah. You know, could be that algorithm. Could be just a number of – you could have just posted that 100th post on Facebook that, that, that put you over the edge and made you get deleted. Yeah, dude, the millions of posts that are going on in – in uh, the, I'm the, just saying the, the milliseconds, the, 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 like no one's stooging that. It has to be an algorithm, right? Is what I'm saying. Well, like, you, no, I that's true. They could stooge it. I mean, it's easy enough on Twitter. It's been done before. Sure. What I'm saying is when that's why Facebook updates your app like every three days or every week, saying oh bug fixes or whatever. They're mm -hmm. updating some algorithm to, to I I believe look at all your stuff. When you agree to that, you're agreeing to them just getting a look over maybe when you use the word murder for spectrum yeah you know that could have just here was the other right thing there. so here's here's another one so uh mark job i work at you know uh racetrack uh, casino type place doing their social media and that can that was connected and i paid for a ad for them using corporate card the first charge – now, th I, this is me trying to take the piss out of some of the conspiracy here. The first charge went to my PayPal account under uh, Hacker Hameen. Instead of charging the card, I pulled the PayPal and disputed – as like $3.80 or whatever, right? I, I, I disputed that, and it was actually – I got an email today that uh, – whatever, I won the disputer. It was credited to my, my PayPal account, and uh, – I took that off my Facebook. Now would Facebook out of retribution, even though the card, the corporate card still was still there on there to pay for the ad. They, they bought like a, you know, a, a boosted ad or whatever. And they hadn't reached the max yet, but just the fact that, that I won over them, would that be enough to go, this is a dummy account. Fuck it. We're just shutting it down. Just like that. Like, I just want to kind of take the piss out of, you know, play all sides of what if and before we go, I'm the persecuted one. And is it something as simple as that that may have shut it down as well? But with that's Ray, a, with Ray, that's weird. That that takes me away from that. Sorry. You know. No, the Ray, uh, the Ray, the big Ray thing of him getting banned or Twitter jail for the next 11 hours or whatever. That's the. That draws you back in, right? To say this is not random, exactly. But I, I wanted the, the all those avenues I talked about. I didn't want to like skip one that was, you know, a little bit lower on the totem pole before we go up to the fucking main event. Well, see, I, I, I don't look at any of them as, as being higher or lower. It's all just fucking bullshit. Like it, it's all 
equally well, awful to me. Some it's Ryan Ryan Satin level, some me. Ryan Satin level cunt bitching about something right, anonymously. And that fucking cunt pisses me off. Like, <laughs> see, see, you fucking cunt. You. <laughs> Guys, it's it's okay. As stated, <laughs> yeah, as stated earlier, the the whole all of those people, every one of those little fucking bitches who probably listen to the show just to see what they can be offended about the same. And I'm not putting us on the same level of like Howard Stern and shit, but the same people who listen to him just to report him. Sure. They waited and they listened just to fucking report him. These are the same cunts who wait for their friend who does love the show to tell him, Oh yeah, they mentioned you today. And he's like, Oh, what did they say? Oh, uh, I was funny. Cause he said this. And then now they get to, they get to go and report. And there is no fucking accountability for any of these bitches. Not a one. Not one of them will come out and say, fucking, hey, Ben, don't like what you're saying. Go fuck yourself. Not a, one of them has a hair on their fucking nutsack to come out and say it. So they're going to go and they'll go report it to Twitter and they'll go report it to Facebook and they'll be a fucking faceless cunt who just sits and sends out all these little problems yeah. and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna wave his dick around while he fucking types on his keyboard with fucking mashed fists. And one has so one, one has real repercussions, you know, of getting right. something pulled. And the other one would start a discourse between two people in conversation and possibly hash some things out or agree to disagree. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to get into it with any marks going back and forth. Like, I'll, I, I kill him with truth. You know that. So, you know, if it's at that level, it's just them, obviously someone who's got a, a no spine just hiding behind these fail safes of corporate social media. One thing I wanted to bring up, Sal, with you is, and I heard Matt Drudge say this, and he said it on Alex Jones, I believe, uh, in the two appearances that he did in a decade there. And I, I got a lot of respect for Drudge because you don't see him that much. And what he usually says happens. He's We like to put ourselves out in front of things. Drudge is a, a pretty big go-to of mine of seeing what's what's happening for – they can be biased, obviously, but uh, he, he, he paints a pretty real picture of what's going on in the world. Um, but he said that, the, that Twitter and Facebook and Instagram are just ghettos, really, of social media. And, you know, maybe I'm Fresh Prince here moving up to Uncle Phil's house out of Philly, uh, West Philadelphia. But, uh, you know, it's it's like – it is a ghetto and should I be that upset about, I mean, for promotional wise and my own business wise of where I operate to make money, but I'm not like, Oh my God, Facebook. And that's the weird things. I thought I would be like that, but I'm not, you know what I mean? That's, that's seriously, that's not even the issue. Like it doesn't matter what you use Facebook for. Even if you used Facebook just to post memes and just to, say hi to your fucking Aunt Bedelia who lives in fucking Connecticut. It doesn't matter what you use it for. You should be able to use it just as much as any of the other fucking bitches sure. who, who want to show pictures of their fucking food or talk to their sister or tell everybody how over they are. You know, you should be able to use it just as much as them and bitch just as much as them if you choose to. It doesn't matter what you use it for, for work, for social. It doesn't fucking matter. Everybody should have the same fucking privilege. And it, it's not... It's, you know, it's, if you're yeah. on this list or you get this, it, it just, it, it doesn't fucking matter. It just, and the, and the more I, I talk about it, cause you know why I could sit here and scream about it all fucking night and there's nothing I can do. Cause there is nobody to punch in the fucking face. Yeah. The, the, the end, if the there is an day, offender, nobody to punch in the face. Right. If there's an offender who did report me and is a stooge then uh, you know, the, the Stasi come uh, to shut it down or, if at the other end of the spectrum, there's nobody to report to, to contact Facebook. There's a little help ticket thing where you can send a screenshot, your phone number and why you are appealing. And there was an email I found and I, I sent there, but when I called up Stevie <clears throat> and I, I mentioned this last night on Russo, I get a, a pre-recorded gimmick and it says, are you calling for Facebook help? Press one, uh, you know, Instagram two whatsapp three and then it went out of like four hours I was like fuck it so i pressed one and it gives a pre-recorded message of go fuck yourself and we don't take calls here pretty much in a, a polite voice that's it but the and i teach i used to teach this to my students the illusion of choice of where you think whatsapp instagram and facebook are separate entities 
is a complete fucking delusion oh, yeah. if you didn't know that. And and that it it's it's total media control, which further pushes me away from <laughs> a Ryan Satin little bitch or Jazz of Blake bitching about something or whatever to pushing me towards a greater media conspiracy of restricted and redacted First Amendment rights, you know, and where do we go from here if that's really the question? Well, there's, you know, there's the thing, too, with Crowder, louder with Crowder, the videos that we keep Love changing, where they, like, change my mind. Did you yeah. guys hear that now YouTube is trying to take the videos down or, or shadow ban them? because yeah. Because they violate the privacy of the people that voluntarily sat down with him to debate. Now, if those people schooled him and made him look like an idiot, they those videos them. would be pushed, trending, and everything. But because yeah. they sat down and they look stupid, you know, how do you sit down to a debate not knowing that the guy is going to come with you with facts on his end to support his story? Now, that's the, that sort of YouTube. What I think happens to us, and this is the scarier thing, and it happened to Russo, Russo was only one guy that got him taken off podcast one. Right. One, there one was dude. one one guy with 19 followers. Well, that I'm, I'm sure he had his told, boys do it too. I'm sure he, I'm that? sure that I'm sure he had his boys go in and do like but it a still wasn't, plan. It still wasn't an upswell of like it wasn't on right. change.org and there wasn't 400,000 right, right, signatures. Right, right, right. There was a guy and I go back to this. I'm just saying an example. I don't, I truly, like you said, Ben, I truly don't care because I only want to go places where it's positive, productive for me and for mm -hmm. us and for what we like. But to have a guy with 19 followers that tweet StarCast, who I was booked up until the time for a sideshow, a little indie show for Pro Wrestling Tees, and then after that, and when he said, we're not putting him on StarCast, and they had tweeted Pro Wrestling Tees, this guy about, oh, do you know who you're doing business with? Not even, they didn't even ask me, like, Hey, what's this about? And I was said, oh, that's uh, silly because the Church of Satan came at me, and this guy's defending the Church of Satan. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, Church dude, of but Satan. They, they, but like, they hopped on, and they just they they were so scared of the guy with 19 followers. Yeah, I really do believe there's no conspiracy. It's just that people are fucking pussies, and they're afraid to to can, hold their ground. Can can I can I? We, I don't know if we're if we're gonna allow to or uh, want to. Can I? Just do the, tell the Blaze a story about the, him fucking running to you guys. Yeah, go ahead, man. I don't okay, give a fuck. Yeah, so. Like, here's the thing. Let me preface it with this. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. And shout out to, to uh, Triple D for another 1,000-bit uh, uh, cheer, man. We appreciate that, uh, obviously. Um, but it, it's – it's we, last week it was kind of a joke of, like, love you guys, fuck you, or fuck you guys. All right, we love you. Thanks for listening. It really, I mean, and I'm not trying to say this to belittle any of our listeners here or watchers at twitch.tv slash conspiracy horsemen. It, it, it's, the, it's the fact that this is our business. We're a locker room guys, yada, yada, yada. But when it comes to that, we, you think we need to put you over? There is a fuck you there <laughs> from, from the workers. And I'm not trying to say we're above, but like, you know, we worked for this little piece of shit celebrity that we hold on to and that we have and that we share with you guys and we we create content for. So for somebody to come along and go, don't agree with it, uh, we're taking this down. Fuck you. All right. Yeah, like that that that's the real fuck you. And it's not a fuck you to to all listeners, but anybody who thinks they're empowered at that level, you're you're just a you're you're a you're a twat really, really. And that's what's that's that's where this has come this has come to this point where these people have shown up and they think they can sway a room with their vote. They right. can sway a, a, a promoter or they can sway a sponsor with their fucking word. I vote with my dollar. Do you? Now, and I, so this is, this is the truth. And you guys, can, you guys can back me up or even call me out bullshit. As, since I've worked in wrestling, since day one, since I was fucking 17, since I've done this, I have never in my life ever said no to a fan i've never said no for to sign an autograph to take a picture uh, even even on stuff where we you know we got to keep moving got to keep moving right i stopped and i've taken the picture i because i or you know because without the fans i'm not there and i, and I don't want to be a cliche sure but i i was that kid i was the kid who oh my god can i have your picture you know what i mean so i was that kid i would never do that to somebody you came out to see us i'm not going to be a dick to you so any any anyway end of story Love fans, hate fans. 
Wrestling fans suck. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's, there's, they do. <laughs> there are other wrestling fans who I love, and I fucking would do anything for them. You wanted me to take pictures. You want me to come see your fucking sick dad? I'll come to your dad's. Like, you know, it's, it's a, yeah. a love-hate. I went into the Hameen Media Group, and... <laughs> No, I, I hate you, Armand. You, I absolutely <laughs> fucking hate. Um, but yeah, I was in the Hameen Media Group when I, I, as a joke between you know friends, I decided I was going to post a picture that I knew was going to get heat. So I put the Benoit and I put Stevie Richards fitness bands across this thing when you yeah. want to hang with the family. So I knew it was a piece of shit move, but it was it was for my it was for <laughs> my not to laugh. We're trying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Fuck you guys because. Locker room wise, <laughs> even Benoit would laugh at that shit. Like, like that's that's the depravity that you guys want to be a part of so bad, and we take it to the extremes. And now that I'm, ki I was kicked out of the heels over strong chat room, but I rehacked that. That's the level we operate at. So even when we're being real with you on Horseman, or on the locker room Friday Veteran Edition, or, or even with Strangler Steve, like you're getting a look at, you know, we take things to level, not even 11, like, you know. And I will always go, I will always go past that, especially. Absolutely. So and once you put yeah. that in there with right. squares and marks and so love I you guys, knew. like I it was I was going to just take a raft of shit to the face. But it <laughs> was I just, can I just preface before you go on with this? Yeah, sure. The reason why it's, it, we do it is because with our careers and what we've seen and what we've experienced and seen true evil in front of our eyes and experienced the worst. Yeah. The worst parts of the entertainment business or the sports business or a mixture of both. That's our coping mechanism to joke about it, to kind of, because if we don't laugh, we'll cry at most of the shit, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's the way, that's kind of what you, you turn it into a joke because <clears throat> the boys are like, deep down, we're like, Hey, we fight. If you laugh, it's like, oh shit, I'm not crazy. It is well, really. I did it last up, right? night on Russo, right? I got you last night, like Sally, like this. They fucking, <laughs> they do raw opening, 17 minute opener, and then they do a fucking match, and then they go to Connor's Cure Kids, right? And they bring out all the babies and heels uh, together who were just feuding on the stage together. March out two kids who are in remission, and and. Russo had cut this big, huge promo, and Stevie did two on Atlanta, how they hate the, the <laughs> Southerners there. So I was like, I couldn't believe, Vince, that what I was hearing from that Denver crowd with these kids, like they were chanting, they had two kids with childhood cancer out there, and these people in Denver are chanting, you deserve it at them. Like left and right, like you deserve it. <laughs> they were actually. They, they, were, like, they, you know. they were, but like, but that was because they were giving them the belts. But I left that part out. So you know, I take it to the yeah. fucking extreme of like the satire bit, and you know, like, you know, and, and you and see and Stevie, <laughs> and you see Stevie and Vince pop on that level of of how we would pop the Benoit shit. Is my point, you know? But oh, go right. ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, yeah. no, no, it's fun. See, that's funny. And but like, <laughs> it was. So funny. The, the, the point was. Wait, I did it because I knew I would pop the boys, and I knew I was going to take shit for it, but I don't care because the guys in there, like Ray and Matt and all those dudes, I know they're going to they're gonna be like, oh, you piece of shit, and I'll laugh about it. So one guy came back, and he was so upset. One guy came back. He was so heartbroken, and I, I assumed it was because he didn't make the fucking Hall of Fame, and then he went on to school me about how it was disrespectful for the business and – everything else <laughs> so i i didn't put it over and i just kind of I, I talked to him but then i goofed on him and the guy turns around and says in a grand flourish well i'm leaving this group this is yeah. awful everyone and i bid I you adieu it was really, <laughs> really weird at that point he like had a british accent yeah, yeah. <laughs> he decided mean. he was going to leave the group and tell everybody he's leaving the group and it was horrible and I needed to be fucking stopped because I was I was just apparently dude. Just he destroyed. so the the backstory too on this. He's messaging me. He's messaging <laughs> Big Ray. He's messaging Stevie. He's messaging Russo. He's you know, like to get Sal thrown off the fucking hot meat. Like to, I'm gonna like I'm gonna fucking bury a guy I've known since fucking. You know, 2006 pretty well. Like, dude, my, my horse and brother, like, are you that fucking delusional as a <laughs> Facebook hero that you think you're going to fucking get to some workers? Like, And here's the truth. The truth of it is I told Stevie and Ben I was doing it as I posted it because that way I can apologize and yeah, not yeah. ask for permission. 
So it, it was one of those. Oh, things. I didn't help. Oh. I said you won't do it. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's the, that's the that's famous right there. Yeah. That's that's the famous. You guys like <laughs> that is, that's, here's that's something salacious. Go, uh, will we put it out in public? And one of us is gonna go. You won't do it. Yeah, that's the, that's oh, you the think I fucking bar, won't? Bar cleaner, man. That's roadkill used to say that shit, and yeah. that meant everybody had to fight. They, <laughs> oh, that guy's a prick. I'm gonna punch him in the face. You won't do it, and then you have to. Get him. I walk up to him and fucking <laughs> clock him. So yeah, that was the that was the two o'clock bar clear. You won't do it. So, <laughs> so now and so asshole knows this, and of course, like a good friend, he takes advantage of that. So he says, "I won't do it," which means I have to now, and. So I do it, and these these guys are getting messaged. So the rib's on them because this cunt is fucking texting them, telling them to fire me, uh, don't pay me, do suspend me without pay or whatever fucking shit, take me off the show. Uh, Russo's gonna lose subscribers if he doesn't get rid of me. Meanwhile, Ru uh, no no offense to Vincent Russo, but he's got dick to do with me. Yeah, yeah, and and Russo has to ask us like, what's going on? I, I don't know, like, <laughs> bro, like you know. <laughs> Yeah, like I just don't like I love Vince, but Vince has nothing to say about anything I do. Right. I don't do a show with him. I don't. You know, these guys have their own deal. It has nothing to do with me. So, but to me, I was fucking dying because he's messaging them, and even Big Ray was like, "Jesus Christ, this guy's busting my balls over this." <laughs> so I was getting no heat now. It was all these guys were taking fucking <laughs> heat over this fucking picture. That, that I was just like, "This is so stupid." But to me. That is the point where it's gotten to, because now this guy's not going to come at me. Come at me. I was ready for it. We were going to have fun with it all day. I, was, I had nothing better to do that Saturday afternoon. <laughs> I was sitting around, no fucking pants on, waiting for this guy to come back at me. <laughs> nothing. He didn't do shit. He left the room. He left the group. And then he kept messaging these guys. And his big fight was, I'm going to take away subscribers. Yeah, as a big loyal Star. supporter, where he's like backhanded and apologizing to me, which is the weird. It's almost like a Patty Hearst syndrome, right? Like that's the and chick. He, and he wanted Stevie to beat me up. He's he's ruining your business. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah, he said I was going to lose people in the band program, and I said, man, it couldn't hurt any more than when I lost Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, after that, what am I saying? Not Patty Hearst, uh, Stockholm syndrome, right? Stockholm it's like syndrome. it's like a it's weird Patty same thing. Patty, is that the same? Is that the chick, yeah, right? All right, so. Uh, Stockholm Syndrome, where they're like apologizing to try and get over with me while they're trying to hurt a dude who I'm way closer with. I don't know how people can hold those thoughts in their head, but to tie all this in, is that the level one shit? We covered that and we covered the level two of, you know, I don't want to be like, I'm just like Alex Jones, but, uh, you know, Mao took the guns, Stalin took the guns, like, you know, like whatever it is, like, you know, but now with the big Ray move, like we talked, it seems like it's at that level. But that wasn't a Facebook move. That was a Twitter move, which is weird to me. So I can't really put that over. I wanted to talk about the PayPal thing. Was it something where that set off a flag? You know, but the, the next level after that is, you know, are they, do they have us on the, you know, especially the Ben Hameen, Ben Hameen. I hate doing the Ben Dewar character, but, you know, the Ben Hameen character, uh, on the list, and it's time you to start to, you checking. Need to put that old teacher picture up of Ben Doer, the one that you want to just beat up with the just short kind of hair. Picture, yeah. uh, the <laughs> Does this Ben Doer character sound anything like Mark Carano? Ben Doer, <laughs> he sounds a lot like this, actually, a little bit. This is more uh, pops than anything, but uh, you know, it's a uh, it, it, it's a it's a very strange like. Well, what's the next level, and who's in on it? I ribbed about. Oh, there's a there's some interns at Georgetown who want to work in the NSA who've had to sit in a windowless office and watch nothing but uh, Ben Hameen videos their whole fucking you know last two years, but is that you know really How far true? The truth is right, it? Yeah. you know, and that's really why my character is always done well because there is truth in everything I say, whether it's border crossing stuff. And I, I, even that is like the lighter side of Hameen, you know, like that's the comedy side as opposed to when it can really get serious where I'm doing a beheading with a fucking machete. So, you know, the, I don't think that's what would have taken it down something like that. But if there is a bigger conspiracy, where are we going and what is next and what are the, ways to protect ourselves before they come for the conspiracy horsemen as a whole. You know, and, and the thing is, 
maybe they're not going to go after the higher ups, like the uh, the guys with seventy five thousand followers. They're going to start with the guys with the hundred and eighty followers, the three hundred followers, the five hundred followers, who retweet the shit that the higher ups are. Because now nobody's going to notice that your outside army's getting picked off. You know, you're you're going doing crowd control. You're picking off the 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 the, right. the R, you know, the N side while, you know, let this guy stand on his fucking platform and talk and let him let him put over all these pictures of Twitter of of, of the Clintons and talk about the kill list and everything else you want to put about. Meanwhile, all of his smaller followers are getting banned, blocked, you know, shit like that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I just feel like there is no when you say what's next. It's whatever they want because we can't stop them. Right. I mean, I'm back on. I've got the other account is a slap hand. Uh, will they be watching that? You know, I'm not going to fuck around and try and uh, test the waters just to be like, oh, I'm going to throw myself under the bus again. Let's see how far we can push it because I got too much business to do. All right. Sorry, my voice is going a little bit here. I've been in meetings all day. Um, I got too much work to do on the outside. So if they want to mess with me, <clears throat> I'm going to get over on them by being able to do my business without interruption, you know? Yeah. That, but that's, that's kind of what they want though. Cause now you're right. kind of staying in your lane in their mind. This is where uh, sites like on or this is stuff like uh what's that one get, get, get a gab or get a gab. Somebody's yeah. talking get, about that today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's going to be like the new Twitter. These are, these are the things that are actually promoted. Liberty and free speech are actually going to become very powerful marketing tools very good for people good eventually point. good point. and uh, and i'm for real hopefully genuinely for a while before the they, they they give you the illusion that it's liberty and freedom for a while so they can sell you ads kind of what youtube used to be and all these other things but that's 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 unfortunately what you need to do now ben ben just because ben or ben whichever one i'm talking to <laughs> uh you you have to do it in their mind because now Facebook eventually is going to be nothing but Nancy Browns and and a soldier, uh, an army of drones and zombies is very dangerous to the educated people out there because they sure. have nothing better to do than just no pun intended drone on and on with the same regurgitated stuff and incorporate more Nancy Browns. And then what happens is when the big fish like Alex and other people start getting that that, you know, starvation you start taking away their business. You start now. Now they either got to get a real job, go into that enslaved system, or they just got to play ball and put out the narrative, or become the controlled opposition. One of the, it's right. never going to be in in anybody at that height. Even Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan really shifted his stuff. He'll selectively go into these alternative topics and history and all this stuff. But he will never, ever, ever touch 9/11, Sandy Hook, all uh, Vegas, all this he's other stuff. He definitely shifted. He shifted his penis into a vagina. <laughs> but he's but he's making more money as time goes on. He has a huge gym there. He's he's got all the. He's like West Coast DD me. I mean, he's got everything to yeah. show off to all his friends. And yeah. and and the thing is with him too is he still comes off as incredibly because then the topics he chooses maybe that they let him who knows the jury's still out on that he's very opinionated and he seems very genuine in those topics and categories so to him he's he's a great worker if that's what he's doing if he's staying away from this he'll only bring eddie bravo on when he needs a spike of just Ooh. polarizing go ahead sorry that i would forget but uh Eddie Bravo is coming to Funny Bone in Syracuse, 45 minutes away, I think second week in October. By the time I get out of work, their set should be done. I'm going to go just to try and get him to come on Horseman. So I'm going to fucking – his ass can't escape them all without a hacker humming attack. Sorry. He's not going to talk to you because he's going to be like, you're not on Facebook. I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't Facebook message you. Hey, friend hey. me. Friend me on Facebook. <laughs> I'm already no, back it's, on it's Facebook. Great. Hacker humming cannot be stopped. Eddie Bravo is somebody that, thank God, I mean, but they could turn around to Eddie Bravo and shut his dojo down somehow or, or shadow ban him on a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And he's talking about stuff that even the conspiracy theorists are very, like, Ugh, get away from me with that flat earth stuff. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, he has one thing that will uh, ostracize him even from the conspiracy theorists, and then he'll mm-hmm. really be a man on an island. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's the type of shit that, like, that's why when people bring up Flat Earth or they bring up other stuff, and you can have your thoughts about any of that stuff, whether secret space program or Flat Earth, little or both, whatever it is, but we have to listen to all the ideas. We can't, because then we, I, I think it's black and white. Then we become just as bad as these people that say, well, yeah, I know the guy. I don't believe that. I believe Seth Rich was murdered, but you know, by the guy by the DNC, and there's a government thing behind it. I believe the government lies, but no, 9/11, that's too far. No, this is too far. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Oh, sorry, dude. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You were on a great diatribe there. But uh, <clears throat> Bro Rocker says, I marked out that Paul Joseph Watson liked your post bin. And then I put Bro Rocker, I missed that, did he? And then CERN Daddy, uh, who I don't know who that is, he says, I popped that Mark Paul Gosler jerked uh, bin off in an elevator in uh, Atlantic City. So hashtag truth. What is up with you, these <laughs> elevators and these actors and comedians? <laughs> that's where they corner that's them. Like, that's like, that's yeah. where they get you. Like it was night. You, you must be clustered. You, you give off like pheromones in the elevator. Or hey, pal, you're going all the way up or you're going all the way down. Yeah. Down. Uh, I, I myself am heading down. Yeah. I hit my little down. Easter egg on the Boca Raton <laughs> tanning salon. <laughs> that was strong. That. that was great, dude. That was a great Easter egg. I almost, I, I almost broke on that. That made me laugh. Inside, I was fucking dying. At I, lo- I love how B- 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 Russo tried to explain how he'll never get a job. Yeah. And he just kept saying, I got. I got point nine 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 nine. I was like, th- that's almost one percent. It's almost one. Like, yeah, like, he's trying. It's like that's a I, little bit. I was I was liking it because you could do Russo as a German with nine 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 nine. He doesn't agree with anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just just isolate that as a yeah, isolate yeah. that as a soundboard like bite there. Yeah, but it just just to wrap it up with that. That's why I think like as as crazy as ideas and as much as you might think you're fucking nuts in this nap when people come on here and they talk about it like like Paul on a plane or other people who we had on yeah. you don't agree with it you say you don't agree with it and nobody gets mad at each other what's no. wrong with that no i want to know why i want i, I dude I, i'm not here to be like hacker i mean stevie richards sal we know fucking everything and this is you know a show that hits obviously close to home to all of us here within one degree of separation as opposed to something like a bermuda triangle that's out of our realm right now uh you know this is right in right in our lives in the last 24 hours um with paul on a plane guys like that anybody we have on we feel like <laughs> dumb wrestlers at that point. Like, you know, we want to, we, we obviously are in not enlightened, but we are aware and awake and we want to say, okay, what else don't I know? T- please let share your information and, and make me a better human being more enlightened. And what was I looking at incorrectly through my operant conditioning from K through 12, that has just been a part of my life. And I like being shaken out of my confines like that, you know, and we, I would never be like, you don't fucking understand you're banned from this show. I don't, uh, you know, care anything about what you got to say. Uh, and, and who would have thought when it comes to, this, I mean, I, I, I hashtag shadow banning earlier. I know that's not what this is, but like the fact that the church of Satan with zero followers would join in a conversation and because of some snowflake to try and get you banned from a show, like how far the reach of this stuff can go. And when you think it's localized, centralized to our following that's super dedicated to us, and we appreciate all of you, but fuck you the same time i guess uh you know uh that that it it's it's much bigger than what the scope of we're looking at it the lens we're looking at it which sal makes me believe it's not an individual which makes me believe further without being emotional and wanting to be like look at look at hacker hameen group we're the fucking shit like no no that that we are on somebody's radar we are fucking saying things. We are that much closer to the target and bringing Nancy Browns out of that, out of that sleep and waking them up and turning them into something else, even if it's just a little bit. But you know what it is? The fact that we're not going out, we're not kicking in Nancy Brown's door and being like, listen to us. This is a choice. You want to come right. on here? You want to hang out in the Twitch group? Fuck off. Make some you know, jokes with each other. Uh, listen to us bullshit. 
then you sit here and you listen to us bullshit. Nobody's kicking down your fucking door to listen to us. We tried Nobody's... that. We tried that 10 years ago and it didn't work. And and it's like that whole thing, like nobody's making you do it. So don't fucking come in and, and, and shit on our floor. We're not yeah. asking you to come in if you don't want to be here. We're not forcing you to stay. Go the fuck out in the yard. Stay out there. Nobody's asking you to come in. You know what I mean? Like so yeah. for them for them to come on in and then <clears throat> bitch about 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 being let in. Well, go fuck yourself then. Like seriously, again, and I want to. I would like to equivocate this. I would like to tie this in um, to the Kavanaugh thing. What's going on with that bullshit? Sure. I just want to just want to yank this in. So when when we sit there and go, yeah, we love you guys. Go fuck yourselves. We are blanket. We are blanketing all the good people that we do love and we do appreciate their shit, and we're blanketing them with the same fucking assholes who are actually elbow and elbow with them. Who are like, oh, well, I don't like what they're doing. The same way it's doing them a disservice. The same way like now these people are coming out and they're saying, oh, victims. No, you can't you can't blame victims. Everybody's a victim. What you're doing, that bullshit, the people that are fucking lying. uh, I saw his dick, but I slapped it. I didn't want to be I didn't want to be in my face. I slapped it away from me because I was so drunk. I had to lay down on the floor. Okay, great. Yeah. So you are obviously a very believable witness. Yeah. you, what you're doing is a disservice to the real victims. There are girls out there and men who are victims of these crimes. Yeah, they, it and could all be what? fabricated completely. They even rolled That's out today. The, the newest chick is like, oh, I was at a party where they were running trains on girls. Really? What were you there? Do you, you were just there to do your just... algebra homework and nobody realized what the fuck was going exactly. on? Like, you know, like you, you knew from the fucking jump what was going down, but now we're supposed to look at you as some moral, ethical angel who's going to take down the whole system because of right. something that happened in 1982? Get the fuck out of here. And that's what I'm saying. Like, but now what they're doing is a disservice to the real shoot victims out there who aren't coming out because they are afraid. Right. Or they don't want to talk about it or they'd rather forget it. It's and, and I, I hate kind of <laughs> kind of crossing that over, but it's the same thing. We're kind of blanketing, you know, go fuck yourselves. We love you uh, to you guys. And but the thing is, you guys know who you are. You guys, the, the ones out there, you know who we like. You know, you guys know who we appreciate. And the people who are offended by t- being told to go fuck yourself, and eh, definitely go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's the real ones versus the fake ones. There's no doubt about well, it. I want to follow up with uh, that louder with Crowder once again. Go see some of his videos before they get completely They're taken tremendous. down. They had one of the um, one of the people that one of the women that accused Bill Clinton of raping her back when he was governor of Arkansas. One of the Juanita Broderick, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, and. She had talked to the people from the Me Too movement who didn't want anything to do with her as far as right. coming out against people that have that have raped and sexually assaulted women and did other this and that. Now, if you're a woman, wouldn't you think that any woman on whatever side of the aisle you're at, it's it's all rape and sexual assault and sexual misconduct or, you know, doing anything. So that whatever you're doing to a woman to make her feel uncomfortable to a certain point or even out and out raping her wouldn't you think they'd want this woman who basically since the 80s has been saying this who came out in the 90s who's been saying this along with where there's smoke there's fire there's there's at least half a dozen women throughout decades that have said this about bill clinton so but they don't want they don't she said straight up in the interview they don't want to have anything to do with me they don't want me a part of this and Thanks, but no thanks. Paraphrasing it. No, I, I agree completely, man. That's a, a perfect point, especially like, you know, to lead to why wouldn't they? Well, look who's on their team. They're not going to go after Bill because Hillary's their fucking, you know, backer, philanthropy, supporter, mouthpiece, what have you. Um, you made a great point earlier I wanted to get back to, you know, you said you're on with the two atheists, but the faith side of things and the end of days of like, censorship this is coming and yada yada jacob israel's definitely been on a new tear in the last like three weeks man four weeks with what's going on astrologically uh censorship wise banning wise it's been pretty interesting to watch his stuff you know shout out to jacob israel uh definitely follow his channel on youtube but he's definitely going farther away from me and Sal and closer to biblical prophecy right now. That's something I, you know, would study and know, but not believe in. 
but it's interesting to watch and see his points on that stuff. If I could follow up real quick about that, don't think he's going to get preachy. As a matter of fact, a lot of people no, he within doesn't. religion, a lot of people in religion don't have a great reaction to him because he's dispelling a lot of the myths and a lot of the man-made stuff about religion. So it's a very, um, it, it mixes a lot of different beliefs, I believe, that are it's generally all moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. It also uncovers a lot of information because, uh, you know, God, I mean, I look at I look at a lot of different videos on YouTube. There are so many different versions of history, and that's that's what we have to talk about too. With Facebook, <clears throat> YouTube, all this other stuff, scrubbing you, scrubbing any kind of information. Google literally definitely changing changing the course and the and the history of history. This is not. This is mm. like man made Mandela effect type stuff. Absolutely scrubbing. Uh, not to go back to Kavanaugh, scrubbing the yearbook from their. Uh where all the chicks wrote that filthy shit about fucking doing uh, all that shit. They scrubbed that you can't find that yearbook. I didn't, I didn't even know about that. Yeah. The yearbook that they all signed and was like, oh, you dirty slut, have you, have you, have you, have you. Gone. It's all gone. Sorry, I'm just looking for that uh, Orwell 1984 quote that I had posted the other day. Hey, because... we're not saying this Kavanaugh guy is, is sane or even a good dude, and for him to be in, in Washington, D.C., and in, in, the, in the filth of the swamp... For decades, he's probably done some shit, just, just speculating. But I would dare say that most of the stuff going on in Washington is consensual. Okay, I'm gonna, I would like to put this out, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I'm going to speak for myself. What they're talking about him doing, <clears throat> I've seen a thousand times worse walking into a locker room in 1997 in fucking Louis, in, in Louisiana. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, Nothing was, there's been no lawsuits. There's been no crazy. It was all just ha ha done. We're all done because everybody's an adult and everybody handled it. And I understand this is high school, high school, high school, where, you know what, if, if, if dude broke his cock out and was jumping on a table, whipping his dick out of people, I can name a few people from high school who did that at a party. I could, I could tell you, but it doesn't, you know what I mean? But they're nobody. So nobody cares. But because you can fuck somebody on this. Because you can destroy somebody with this, now you're going to use it. Yeah, go, yeah, yeah, yeah but go they but, but he, they could have destroyed him when he was a judge all these years or whatever right. he, a prominent right. position he had it, over it the didn't past. Didn't have anything it, for them. It's you a know what mid, I mean? it's a midterm election po political move to delay this in order to get the Democrats into the midterms. I'm not saying, and I'm saying names of teams. I'm not against. I'm against all the teams, actually, just like we are. We're against this fucking this whole thing of playing these gangs and everything. But mm. that's exactly the timing of this. Says nothing. If we had done this, we would have been like, you know, there's no way. That's exactly what it is. But they are throwing this out there, and all of a sudden, it's the it's the trigger words. Just like calling Russo a sexist, a racist, a misogynist, Not a homophobe. I, they didn't, I don't think they've called him that yet, but you've just given him a new idea. <laughs> to give him, but that's, well, these are words. Well, he's saying 999, so. These are an interesting, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to put him in the Die Hard remake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. this, this is literally just, these are scary words, man. And they're scary if someone ever said any of these words to any of us, mm -hmm. we would have a response. But we're not allowed to have – like Vince wasn't even allowed to have a response to this or face his accuser. Or, and Podcast One jumped the gun, and then they were like, <laughs> give Vince Russo credit. Then they came back and went, okay, we'll let you come back on. But Vince saw it already for what it was. Like, you guys are just going to keep doing this to me, yep. and I'm better off just doing my own thing. Yeah, he has great foresight when it comes to that, of dealing with the corporate bullshit meter. There's no doubt about it. In day one, when he announced Westwood won, the email started flowing. I just want to close this segment up, and I appreciate uh, all my co-hosts, obviously Big Sal, GGP who's not here, and Stevie, man, for uh, <clears throat> letting me know out of the gate what's going on. Um, it, it's an interesting, weird frustrating <laughs> time for me I, I don't feel emotionally like as inflammatory like 
angry because there's nowhere to really hit the bullseye uh, when it comes to putting the blame on something. And I think that's it. So I don't want to be on my jump to conclusions, Matt, and fucking uh, <laughs> and, and, and just be like, oh, it's these snowflakes. Oh, it's censorship. Oh, it's my first amendments. Oh, it's I'm, I'm as big as Alex. And like, you know, like none of that shit. Like I, I just it's all those thoughts in this big fishbowl that's uh the the giant head of hacker i mean operation fishbowl is that operation fishbowl from george orwell uh 1984 every record has been destroyed or falsified every book rewritten every picture has been repainted every statue and street building has been renamed every date has been altered the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute history has stopped nothing exists except endless present in which the party is always right very powerful um and it's a playbook if you haven't read 1984 even if you have read it go back and read it again you can find it on pdf online free and, and uh, it's a, insane a great movie with john belushi dan Aykroyd. is that not the same one no it's not it's a, it's a different one oh, that's stripes oh, <laughs> uh but uh, we're gonna switch over to you guys make you the uh, heavy hitters of the show see how long my voice can hold out here because uh, we're going to the general neutral messaging system. Anything else you guys want to add as we wrap up here and uh, move on to the next seg? How heated would everybody have been if they if fucking Facebook deleted all the emails? All, all what emails? All Hillary's? All, all the all the fans' emails. Oh, all, all of the, the the gmails from conspiracy horsemen. Uh, they they'd be like, "Fuck you, Hameen. You won't read my email." So the heat would still <laughs> be on me. Is. That's all it would be. <sighs> <laughs> Fuck it, he doesn't even want to read him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> oh shit. <clears throat> Sorry if my voice is giving out, guys. I've uh my unicorn horns. Do you want me to read them? Um uh, your voice is already given out long ago, so you're <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate the conference. You want me to read them? Where where's it at? I'll find them. I got them. Here we go. <clears throat> if I if I gotta Jeez, tap, man. I'll tap out. You don't have to protect your spot, Paul. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Uh, from Adam R. He says, howdy, howdy, horseman. First off, thanks for the insight dropped. Glad to hear your podcast on Russo Brand. Second, regarding the August 31st episode, uh, mentioning the bank bailout money and following the money, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Robert Kiyosaki, author of the financial New York Times bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He's a big fa uh, fan of looking into the shadow government and the elite lineage uh, that has manipulated our school and monetary systems as heard on his podcast, the rich dad radio show. The point is, I think you should invite him on the conspiracy horseman podcast so we can explain what b the big banks did with the bailout money. It'll get y'all hot. Uh, see him on YouTube, uh, the red pill expo at this link. Keep on riding Adam from El Paso. Um, cool, man. Uh, I haven't heard of him. Uh, I definitely will check out this link you sent and, uh, put it in the, chat right now for the boys and you know who uh, probably know about that fucking ggp oh what yeah about i mean he's the money guy money. right so I've read, I've read his books way back they've been around rich dad poor dad uh they, they he has investment books also very very interesting stuff i didn't know maybe it is based in a lot of conspiracy stuff because he does talk a lot about i guess financial sla slavery and stuff like that and putting yourself in debt and it was it was coded for I guess the Nancy Browns in the books, but yeah, if you read between the lines, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see now that I'm thinking about it, he's pretty smart to, to that kind of stuff. Yeah, you should try to get him on. But he does a lot of book tours and he he speaks around. I think he's more like he does a lot of presentations, kind of in that Tony Robbins vein too, which can be off putting right. as well. Yeah, well, we'll ch well definitely check it out and see if uh, it's the way we want to go. We appreciate that email and the stooge. I hadn't I hadn't heard of him before, so <clears throat> pretty interesting. We d we want to bring you guys, you know, the guests you want as well. And uh, GGP, he needs a money talk show. We haven't had one in a while. <clears throat> from the Men in Black, from uh, Jay Bacalal. Uh, yeah, a lot, horsemen. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Men in Black. No, not the Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones version. Are they government agents who go around covering up alien activity? Or much like the movies, are they cops who protect humanity from bad alien hombres? P.S. I want to thank GGP for tweeting me the video of his match with Stevie from Extreme Rising. GGP made the kid look like a million bucks. Ride uh, with the horsemen or die. 
So he made, made you look made you look good out there, did he? Man, talking that match over when I first met Papadon was something else. He was <laughs> like talking. He to wanted to do that, dude. He was not the <laughs> Papadon he is today. He doesn't fucking listen to this. So I'm just gonna tell the story. <laughs> this fucking guy wanted to do every high spot in the book. He out. wanted to do zero psychology. He wanted to go out there and <clears> like, <throat> trade submission holds, which I said trade. That means two both guys have to know submission holds. What are you talking about? <laughs> it wasn't until so he worked with Hacker Hameen I mean, that he saw that waving a flag and raising your arms is all you had to dare, really fucking do. Dare I say, and he's a great <laughs> worker, dare I say, I don't want to be too arrogant here, so I'm saying like the Alex Jones level, but I, I think I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Finally, you know far, something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like... I, as far as Men in Black, every story that I've heard so far has been that they are the extraterrestrial. And, you know, they, they are working with us. You know, that sort of deal. Like, or working, they're doing what they want to do and letting us, letting us right. kind of, you know, <clears throat> assist them. And it's kind of like, so far, that's been every, how they always seemed a little odd or a little off. Some were saying that there might have been clones or some sort of a genetic experiment of types of, you know, their eyes were a little too far apart or, uh, you know, they had no hair at all, which, you know, that's from Fringe and shit like that. But right. Who was a time traveler, who did this, who did that. But, you know, again, all of these stories, it's never been the just the simple fact of, okay, this guy showed up and they carted everything away. It's always been this guy showed up and everybody got an uneasy feeling. When they started questioning him, everybody started getting nauseous in the group. You know, when uh, when they tried to cop take a picture on a phone, you know, everybody started getting shaky and the, the phone was shaky. And that, so there's always a supernatural element to every story that somebody's right. told about the men in black. Well, how about the, the the footage from the hotel lobby, you know, that we've seen where it, Dale's guys look, I'll say humanoid. If right. you had one guy that was a little weird looking, okay. The other guy puts it over, right? Like just too much. I mean, and Cosby math, I mean, Cosby math will get you three to 10 at this point. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, here's something that's, even if it's on CCTV looks a little X files to us, but like, dude, that, that doesn't look human to me. Something sticks out looking at that of like, Oh shit. So Cosby math 1%. Something's got to be there, men in black wise. And to put the movie out is what we know with Operation Northwoods to normalize it. You know what I mean? To make it just like, oh, ha ha, running joke. Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, men in black. When the reality is there probably is a, an entire team as we've seen documented. And I believe uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Stevie, what's his name? Forgive me. Career. No, that we went and saw. Oh, Dr. Bur uh, Bill Burns. Bill Burns, Burns thank you. Um, you know, puts over that men in black have shown up at multiple sites before almost anybody else on there. So do they have the rocket car that goes uh, zero to 900 miles an hour or whatever? I mean, obviously that's the Hollywood shit. But are they tapped into a higher communication big brother base where they know first of what's going on and they're deployed there to clean up a scene and maybe that little flashy thing that erases your memory is absolutely fucking real you know that would be more believable to me than anything is is what we've seen with being able to implant memories into people's mind that was a big story this week you know uh and and almost to the matrix upload of i know kung fu bro you know like that's uh -oh. <laughs> whoa yeah like that's 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 the real shit of what we're living right now. So when it comes to Men in Black, I absolutely believe it. And also, um, you know, there's been documented that aliens were working with uh, government uh, officials. What was his name? It started with a V. Oh fuck! It's gonna drive me nuts. Hold on one second. Somebody take the reins. Were you talking about the Air Force Base where they had the uh, EB ones that had the the, no. the thing that? Uh, where they were, the, they basically killed the two guards that went to draw the weapons. No that incident. That no, kind of this guy the... was like more of an ambassador that would actually work with. He he's been captured on camera a couple times. <clears throat> um, oh 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 shit! God, I 
God damn mm. it. And I know who you're talking about, too. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of his name. Oh. Uh, well, dude, speaking of speed, while you guys were thinking it about that. It starts with a V, I believe. Victor dude, something. Dude Bud was saying VTK or VTM. Uh, uh, I never heard of this person. VKM? Vince, uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. McMahon. Yeah, pal. I've been McKay working McMahon? with the aliens for years. Yeah. The Vatican? What else? <laughs> Vic Tabak. <laughs> Victor from the Ascension. <laughs> yeah, it's him. So... It, it, what about the Secret Service agent too that people have said might have been a Men in Black uh, person? Right, that's because another. He was that guy, yeah. man. That was a lot more clear than the than the sure. security cam footage at the hotel lobby. That was at a speech. He was right there in the crowd. He looked every bit of a you know of an alien. Who was? I'm, I'm trying to buy you time. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Google is fucking with you right now. You, you put in V and it says Hillary Clinton 2020. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know why this won't come up. I don't want to waste a ton of time on it. But this was a big, and Google scrubbed this story because it would have been page one shit. Well, um, I think I could, that adds to the validity of it then. Yeah, yeah. What's the other one about Duck, Duck, Go, right? Duck, Duck, Go. Sorry, and guys, for doing some dead you guys, are, you guys are bringing up stuff I've never heard of before. This is a very enlightening. <laughs> The V guy you're talking about is the he was the alien ambassador that they've worked with. Um, he he's like a he's like a halfway decent, good looking dude. Like he's got like quarterback chiseled jaw. And they've like had he, he's he showed up. Didn't he show up at <clears> one of like at a, at some hearing? And he was he, yes. he like mm -hmm. he was there, and he was just like, yeah, I'm I'm here, I'm here to help. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's a lot of like Congress plate the like shots name. where they would actually take shots of him of what in pictures, and he looks and he very humanoid. Like, Doctor like Orr, Doctor Othman. No, nope. that's what I just looked up. The uh, the U UN secretive alien ambassador. Doctor Othman. It came, up on, the econ it came yeah. up on the Economist of all places. <clears throat> that's why I said like uh, Mazian Othman was the. The name that just came up. Amazing. I, I looked up Alien Ambassador V, and uh, that's what Diana came up. Diana showed up. Yeah. I, I only I me all, all three of us are the only ones. Dude, this that is going to drive me crazy. I feel that that's not it. Not not Maslin Offman either. It's a he's, he looks like a white guy, like a Nordic. Man, this is <laughs> this is bad radio right now or bad podcasting, but that's going to drive me absolutely fucking batshit, you guys. So. I'm going to put it on you, actually, twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman. Uh, get on it right now on your Google Master or whatever, um, you know, search engine you like. <clears throat> it yeah, was, if you it find was, out afterwards, you can tag them on Facebook. It was like Nixon time. Like, uh, you know, like the, you, you see the black and white pictures. He's there, and he was uh, a big uh, influencer, and, and people say that of, of what happened with our government. And now um, – you know, further with the men in black, we talked about the defense minister of Canada put it over. He said that there were seven races. He actually came out again. This guy's still alive. Said there was 80 races, and we've seen that of alien that we're working with. And we've seen that uh, in YouTube video before, but, you know, they're putting it over. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, it could be. could have been Valiant Thor. That away, Tommy. That's it. Valiant Thor, you guys. Look that up. Wow, what a name. Uh, Jesus Christ, it took forever. But uh, appreciate you. Double shout out to this is Tommy Valiant Thor. Um, pretty interesting story and something I think we should actually do a show here on in the next uh, couple weeks or so. So good men in black question. I'm with it. I think they're a legit thing. Is it, you know, 80 different alien races in an office commingling, doing office shit American style? I don't know about that. Uh. Insights and observations from Frankie T. It says, Horseman, thanks for a great show that gives me plenty of food for thought every week as I toll away as a faceless cog in the corporate machine. I just wanted to run a quick thought by you guys and see what your thoughts on this idea are. There's been so much talk of opinion being controlled and blocked on the mainstream media from Alex Jones to Crow Triple Seven and even you guys. Do you think that per yeah? Uh, do you guys uh, think that perhaps in the near future that differing opinion and thoughts that go contrary to the traditional left, right, or conservative liberal story that we are forced to live in daily, uh, live in daily, will have to be transmitted via the actual written word, bypassing the digital world altogether? 
I foresee a future where the media and electronic world will be so manipulated and controlled that people will have to go to the creation of pamphlets and written tracks as a way to get information that goes contrary to the narrative out there to people that want to see behind the curtain. What are your thoughts on this? Keep up the good fight. Keep $5 face slapping people till they are really opening their eyes. Frankie T966. Well, appreciate that. Great question, Frankie. Kind of took a little side swerve there from where I thought you were going, which I like. <clears throat> uh, Sally, go ahead. Uh, no, I, uh, my, I was kind of, uh, sidetracked my myself on that so uh i I think i think that they will always be the guerrilla artist movement to use analog media as we move towards a more digital platform i think is the the bigger answer so if we are reaching the masses in a mass media mass text social media whatever it is vr way 20 30 years from now if there's a real message you want to spread it always goes back to pen and paper we see it in v for vendetta when the they pass the note that way we see it in orwell's 1984 it's a connection it's a real you know transmission of communication that way that isn't just sloughed off it because it's something you can hold and feel as opposed to a message that you can quickly delete it's gonna it's it's like the the war of the worlds where this advanced race comes, destroys the fuck out of us, and the simple cold puts them, you know, puts them down. Right. It's always going to be go back to the originals, go back to the where it started. Right now, the analog that's it's kind of for hipsters now, and like those, you know, that niche groups of con goers who they they buy, sell, and trade VHS, and they buy, sell, trade Beta, and you know those guys are always going to be around. You're always going to have somebody like that, and eventually. Uh, like code breakers, you know, all those, the wind talkers and all that shit, yeah. what they wound up doing, everything they came up with got beat. So they went back to the old shit that nobody was covering. Right. So the day they get rid of all their bullshit of, you know, uh, you know, we don't have anything to block analog or do anything like that. Well, that's going to be how they start sending shit. And it's going to be through the mail. Somebody sends a VHS to get the word out. So interesting off of our last show with the sunspot new mexico observatory what well, that was our postulate that way and and there's a bare naked lady song called everything old is new again and uh i think that's yeah. the real the message of it like everything that was once was will be retro again like 70s style was in the 90s for a minute there you know like whatever it is is going to have that romantic effect to it especially as you move away from that, people are going to want to hold on to that and cherish it. That's actually a big part of V for Vendetta too, when they bust into uh, the one comedian's house there and he's got a secret room with the Quran and, you know, different art pieces and things like that, that we saw from, it's like a dystopian Fahrenheit 451 or well, 1984 where books have already been banned and burned. Uh, he's got his own secret library and that's enough thought crime to get you put in whatever jail or unpersoned or along those lines. Yeah. And if you don't think, if you don't think that we're close to that right now, it, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of yeah. analogies that can be made. And obviously it's been dr dr dramatized to a certain extent, but not really when you're looking at Viva for v for Vendetta, I was going to say, the people, what our one of our theories was that somebody was trying to get information out of that observatory through snail mail, and that's mm -hmm. why they shut down the post office. So, essentially, trying to avoid all the digital signatures and footprints to use the analog to use the snail mail. But I think they're they might it might be a big cat and mouse game because maybe they're listening and saying, We already got that covered autom automated with an algorithm, we have to really guard the post office and see if people are going to, you know, come through this way. And I mean, who knows how far that kind of, uh, censorship will go either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of where they're, <clears throat> you know, scanning, opening your mail. I, absolutely. Of checking everything because of their paranoia of what, of losing power as they gain more and more and more. I uh, wanted to say shout out. Thanks to the dirty, dirty turnbuckle for 29, uh, shamrocks and one gay flag. Uh, pledged uh we're, we'll yeah. spend it wisely <clears throat> and he's uh he's the one that makes those amazing oh, gifts amazing gifts. yeah we always have a we always have a blast seeing those 
Uh, I'm sure you can come up with a good one for uh, Ben Hameen being uh, completely ben un- Hameen. What's that? Ben Hameen? I'm being Ben Hameen. <laughs> ben Hameen. Good. Completely unperson from Facebook. Sorry, guys. My voice is dipping out. I got one more left in me here. <clears throat> it's dipping in, it's dipping donuts and out. <laughs> from uh, Rick Warner, big supporter for Horsemen. Uh, we're not that. We're the conspiracy horsemen. I got a favor to ask you guys. I'm a loyal listener, and I just have a simple request. Can you guys discuss the issue of Fort Knox and the gold, which hasn't been seen by the public since the early 1970s, but wasn't inventoried at that time, and it just showed a video of gold being there? Now, I'm sure you have heard rumors uh, that a lot of the gold isn't there uh, anymore and that some of the gold uh, that is there is from other countries and that a lot of the storage area in the safes and artifacts and could possibly be the wreckage from the Roswell crash and other items that have social effects. Uh, I would like to hear uh, your guys' opinions and beliefs, and I have did, I have did my own research I have did my own research, I guess. And uh, some of the entire staff, like Area 51 staff, are sworn to secretive oath. But like Area 51, a couple of them have leaked this information uh, that have led us uh, to believe that there is not as much gold there uh, as which would send this country into a financial disaster. Could you guys give your thoughts and opinions on the subject? Thank you, guys. Rick Warner. Uh, thank you, Rick, man. I know you're a loyal supporter and uh, very active in the Hameen group, man. Appreciate you. Um, Sal and I lived not far from there for a while. <clears throat> you know, uh, Stevie too, probably. Um, it, it's, a, it, it's a pretty big compound that they do have locked down. You can't get close to, but the rumors do abound, especially when you're in Kentucky, of, uh, hey, it's not there anymore. And I have seen the videos of – that they may have moved Roswell, uh, you know, debris there to lock it down. Um, there was a big gold move out of there that was uh, put on record. And, uh, you know, that gold moved to New York City. And then a lot of people believe it went from there to China. And that's where China's gold reserve actually really started to take off. So I don't believe that there is that amount of gold in Fort Knox just because it became a pop culture thing. And anytime a thing like Area 51 or Fort Knox becomes like movie fodder, um, they're going to be like, no, oh, fuck this. We want to go someplace way more secret where nobody knows shit, <laughs> you know? So uh, I, I think that for that purpose, if not the fact that uh, our whole system is based on a, a fake petrol dollar, um, and credit system and, and all that kind of shit um, that they, they did sell off the gold because they don't care because they've got a whole other scheme going. I'd agree with that. Is uh, Sal frozen? Bing, 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 bing. Sal, he bing, froze. Bing, 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 bing. He looks frozen. He, he looks, looks mad. Too. He looks well, frozen. Like, that's He's our pissed. New, that's He's... our new group picture. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Got it. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they wouldn't have any – the, the work of the gold, the gold doesn't really even need to exist. So all you really have to do is say there is gold there. And even – let's let's take the conspiracy out of it. If you have all the United States gold or gold from the world or however much gold you're going to have there, a ton of it, right. literally or more, why would you advertise it? And I think the theater of security there, even really making the security real in a building that doesn't have the gold, Area 51 has been closed down as far as the suspected alien – spacecraft or the experimental spacecraft activity and moved to Dugway. Then people found out about Dugway. Mm-hmm. It's probably somewhere else already. So if you go between those two, you're on a, you're on a shell game. You're on a, you're on a wild goose chase. I think that's and what that's they want, is, right? Well, even if they're not being shady or conspiratorial, it's, it's what they should be doing to keep the government secret safe. It's what they should be doing to keep the gold safe if people want the gold, like the leprechaun in Alabama where they wanted the gold. <laughs> yeah. you know, I want to, but but it, we've never seen the gold. We, we hear about it. It's Our economy is not even based on the gold anymore. If so if it's not backed back by gold, you're right. Why bother even having it? Right. You got an earth scam going on. Yeah, especially if they don't believe. Uh, oh, let's see. Sorry. Hey. Uh, yeah. Sal says he lost power. There's a storm there. And then uh, GGP says, so no show. So we'll see if we can add GGP in here. Oh. 
stand by everybody. <laughs> and XR Butcher, thank you for the uh, thank you for the bits. Then Pop and I will be here just in time to, to try to get a payoff. So there we go. So I want to thank her. Oh shit! Hey, let me see sorry, I wrong call, him. dude. I gotta go I back. Got, I got him. I got him. You got us. I, I don't know if we're still streaming this one on Twitch though. Uh, we're gone. Hold on, stand by. Yeah, it looks I, like we only, are. Hey, it's only me. <laughs> it's only, it's me only you. all four of us. That's all four of us. There we go. There you go. Who we got here? That was interesting. Um, can you see me? Yeah, we yeah. can see you, man. For sure. Sal's uh, power just cut out, so he, he might be back in just a minute here. So before I switch names around, I'll wait for a little bit. <clears throat> how's uh, how's Boy Scouts? Tremendous. Good. You what? What badge did you get? Kick out on uh, two badge. Yeah, <laughs> that I'm gonna whip Blake Troops ass. That's what I'm gonna uh, badge. That's exactly what I got. Nice. Fucking punk. So we went. We went through. You know the gamut. We're in the gender neutral mailbag uh, messaging system now. But um, you know, I just wanted to get your opinion uh, on uh, everything that uh, kind of transpired with. What it went down, we you know we covered the gamut. Is it just one person bitching? We weren't sure because you know if it was that, then I probably would just be in Facebook jail and not be completely uh, unpersoned at this time and have my account disabled. Uh, or is it as far as uh, they're looking at us all? Because I don't know if you saw this, but uh, while you were doing your thing, uh, being super dad, uh, Big Ray got banned from Twitter for just like a free Ben Hameen hashtag type post. So that kind of pushes us to the far side of like, are they looking at everybody? Are they, you know, just ready to start getting rid of accounts or is it something simple uh, as an, as a clerical error? I don't know. I think, I think because we're not on the liberal left, we're all getting, uh, we're all getting penalized here for no apparent reason. Uh, you, you, I don't understand why they banned you. But I can probably take a good guess that maybe that piece of shit, whatever Jazza, whatever his name is, decided to, or someone of his, of that type of nature, maybe someone you have an issue with, decided to um, make a false claim against you or put in a complaint. That's all you need, man. You yeah. don't need proof anymore. See, because I and, thought and, it was that, and like, and you may be absolutely right, but if somebody like, unless Facebook changed their terms of with that. Because that would have just kind of laid put you put me in suspension for like seventy two hours, maybe twenty four hours of time out, where I could see things, but I couldn't post. You know, this was a complete like no, everything you had is fucking gone. Which well, this is what this is what happened with me maybe about a year, two years ago, three years ago. I used to have the page just under uh, Greek God Papadon. Greek God was one word as a first name, and then Papadon as a second, and because it wasn't my shoot name. They just deleted my account. So I had to redo my account. Right. Yours was on the bin I'm in. And they probably got a complaint. And they said, you know what? Fuck him. And that's what they did. It also had Ben Doer on there, though, too. Did it? There was like a weird loophole for a while there where you could have like, you know how on Twitter you can have your handle and you can have some gimmick name? Facebook had that, too. And that's what I had because it, it was under slash B door, but even it would come as Ben Hameen when you search it, obviously more. So is it something like, and that's a perfect point. I was saying, is it a cleric layer or something along those lines where there's like, fuck this, but I can't get to anybody to get any real answers, you know, on anything. So is it as small as some snowflake bitching or is it as big as a first amendment crackdown for what we've been talking about? Well, first of all, um, regardless of why it happened, either a fucking douchebag snowflake with his feelings hurt in a safe space, yeah, or because of uh, you know gimmick name on on the account, they should have gave you an, an opportunity to change the name. Number right. one, number two, they don't they, just because you don't agree with their opinion, their narrative, which is typical liberal left thinking, doesn't mean you're in the wrong. It just doesn't mean you, you just means you just doesn't agree with them. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they are able to disable your account without even any acknowledgement, without any, any, any warning or any notification is just a complete and utterly disrespect and violation of the First Amendment. Regardless of any said, well, whatever you say, you know what I'm saying? 
it's a violation of the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. I mean, put a case in point. We have these people at TED Talk come out and talk about how we should sympathize with pedophiles. That pissed me off. But it's in their fucking right under the First Amendment to express their opinion. And so those course, videos are still up on YouTube. Still up. Of course it is. And you know what? Um, anybody who bashes Trump or bashes conservatism and, and, the, and, the, and the right, all their stuff doesn't come down because the people who are running the, 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 the social media sites and the entire entertainment industry, they're all far left. You know what I'm saying? How do you, how do you open up uh, an award ceremony and say, quick, let's get this done before we all get caught and make joke about sexual harassment and make joke about pedophilia, and that's okay. How do you host a show called The View and, and demonize the leader of the free world, whether you're right or wrong? And, and as soon as someone says something for him, you guys attack him. You And then Whoopi Goldberg stands up and and, uh, and vouches for that, that director, Pulas uh, Roman Pulaski, Polanski, about violating a 13-year-old girl when he's a grown fucking adult. But that's yep. fine. Because her exact work is there's rape and then there's rape, rape. No, bitch. It's just rape. So whatever she can say is fine. But whatever you say or whatever you post or whatever we do because it doesn't agree with their opinion, we get freaking shut out. And that isn't right. Because, like I said before, anyone's entitled to their own opinion. Colin Kaepernick, he has every right to kneel and every right to protest whatever he wants to protest. There's a time and a place for it, though. I think he did it in bad poor taste, in my opinion. So if that's the case... Case in point, if you're going to ban people on the left, you got to ban people on the right. If you're going to praise people on the left, you got to praise people on the right. You can't pick and choose and have selective demonization and selective glorification based on what fits your narrative or your opinion. It has to be even across the entire playing field in order to be justified. In this case, it's not. I agree with you completely in that, dude. Uh, I think that's great points all the way around. Uh, kind of give it a full 360 you know, view, view of it, uh, to cover both sides. And that's kind of where I am in the middle of, I don't know. So there's no answers. So how can I get hot at one side or the other? If I, there's no place to direct my, uh, uh, frustration. I think that's part of the work of how they want it to be. And, and that's a brilliant way to, to kind of set things up to well, keep that, you spinning that's, your wheels. That's, that's the wrestling promotion part of it. The I called, I used to call, um, I used to call WWE Al Qaeda Entertainment because there were so many sleeper cells, and you couldn't. You, the compartmentalization we talk about it mm -hmm. with the writing. It's the same thing with, especially with talent relations in the office, and oh, with this person, you don't know who your friend is. And who, you don't even know who to go to when you have an issue, mm -hmm. because then they say, "Well, it's not me, it's them." Then you go to them, then you have heat with the other person. It, it's a, it's a, it's a confusing, chaotic thing. And with you. You're scrambling around trying to find the right person that probably doesn't exist. And you already said it. You did mission accomplished on their part because even if it is on a smaller scale and you're fine because you have a higher, a higher enlightened uh, version of whatever you want to get the message across, you still have to stay in your lane and stay in tow and walk that line to make your money. And they, they've accomplished their mission in a way. To, Absolutely. To, you know, at least on Facebook, you're you're going to be a good little boy. Yeah, for this moment, I had to create the dummy account to just do my business. But we'll see if they, you know, are are looking with uh, even harsher eyes going through everything with a fine tooth comb. And well, uh, they're making it. You know what? Listen, man, people are lazy. The majority of people are lazy, and what's going to happen is they make it this hard for you to get your account back because then when it happens. When when a situation like this occurs, they're gonna say, ah, he's not gonna go through all the loops. He's right. not gonna jump yeah, over yeah. all the barricades in order to get it back. It'll be easier for him just to start another account, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. They didn't and know they, they were I mean, fucking with that. That's the way it works. Man. You know what I mean? I say call a lawyer. Yeah, that's my. I think that's my next step this week. Eight eight eight. Eight 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 eight. Celino and Barnes. Baby. Okay, yeah. Well, don't don't call uh, the 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 DWI guy around us. Just actually got busted for DWI like two uh -huh. weeks ago. <laughs> oh, fucking good stuff, Tom and Nelly. Um, call one eight hundred DWI team. Um, sales I back with us. Who's he gonna call? Yeah, oh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Sales back with us after uh, losing yeah, yeah. power. You know, he went up on yeah, the roof. I didn't roof. realize it was fucking storm. The thunder's going on outside and shit. 
I had, had no idea. You got an aw- We got an awesome screenshot of you when you froze up, though. It'll be the new chat face, so we're excited oh, about oh, that. I can't, can't wait. wait to fucking see that. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> but, yeah, the... The GGP just, uh, you know, lit it up, uh, put it over, and, and gave the good 360 scope of kind of where we all are with it, of the ridiculousness of it, of do you want to get some get back on somebody who said something, you want to ban them, you want to do this, like we said, and, and, and get some payback. We've already lost the greater argument of First Amendment rights. To play devil's advocate to that, GGP, just in closing, because we closed this up before, but somebody did tweet me, and it was – not what I wanted to hear, but it was a real point of Facebook is a private company. It's not the street corner where you can go out and say what the fuck you want. It's not no. a private company. It's traded on an exchange. Well, re- re- regardless, it doesn't guarantee your First Amendment rights. I understand they, that. They have the ability at any time to say, fuck you, as a user yeah, because have- it's a free service. So my point being, is, let's say they did that not just to me, but to... 20,000 other people in the truth seeking community, their stock price might drop. That's going to hurt them. Maybe they'll say, fuck it. It was worth it, but that's their prerogative. So that's the other part of me not getting super hot, even though they're, you know, quelling my voice a bit uh, or fully, I guess is, is the fact that, well, it, it isn't something where it's like, this is America. They're taking away. This is a fucking corporate app. You know, and and how far can you go with that? No, I agree with you to a certain extent, but still, you can have people come on Facebook and and demonize certain individuals, mm-hmm. and it's okay because it fits the liberal agenda. Yeah, it agenda. fits their narrative absolutely. I get it. So, like I said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It sure. shouldn't be, you know, the way they're doing it. Now, I, now they are a publicly traded company, and. You know what? We do sign and not read the terms and conditions, which they can change in the drop of a hat, just like that, which is that says in the terms and conditions, we can do whatever the fuck we want. It's our company. But at the same time, anyone can do anything, but there's no proof. But my, proof? My, my point is just at the end of the day, as, as pissed off as we can get and First Amendment this and that, Facebook is not America is the no. the bottom line where I just kind of have to use that as a baseline to stay like mentally sharp and not get over emotional with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what pisses me off though? All the context uh, and all the work you made to build up your Facebook page yeah, yeah gone. and people now you have to re-ask to sign and, and accept your friend request, even personal real friends, mm-hmm. not just bullshit fans and, and, and Facebook friends or whatever and bots point being is that's waste of time. On your part, yeah, that's, that's money time. Out of your yeah, pocket. Absolutely, it's time is money. So it's kind of it's kind of sad. It is the way it is, but you're better than that, in my opinion. You don't need Facebook. Well, I do yeah. kind of because of that, and that, and you have a point there because you said hit the lawyer up because now I gave it twelve hours to see if it was going to blow over. Now it really is Who's coming over? to damages and time and things like that because my whole legit business my llc is all social media based so you're right you know is there is there a true uh lawsuit there well i was gonna hit you up today have you help me do some social media work to try to get my brand the ggp brand over but i couldn't get a hold of you so there's low income. <laughs> we got to go for this new Mark character I invented called Ben Doer. He's fucking not over, but he knows some shit. None of us, none of our Mark characters are overs. Our wives will know our souls. Well, let, let's talk about a Mark character who definitely isn't over, and that's the, this fucking uh, fake ass John Cena who got in your face at bumps oh, and bruises. Oh, we uh, want to know: yeah. Are we getting worked, or is this a fucking? That le- was not part of the show. That was a legit hey. douchebag who just thought he was over. <laughs> That was not part of the show. To everybody who's listening, uh, I'm telling you right now, that was not part of the show. This guy, he, I guess he wants to get into the wrestling business, thought he was a tough guy, got in my face. I'm, I'm part of the old school. Uh, you know what? I'm not a tough guy. But Sal can attest to where we grew up. Shit goes, <laughs> shit goes down. Wow. Shit goes down. We, we do not back down. And you know what? I never back down, ever. GGP, I, before the show. That's exactly what he said. So I said to Ben, I said, listen, I go, not that, you know, we grew up in fucking Compton or whatever bullshit. We grew up in Rosedale together. 
mushing somebody in the face was the end of it. <laughs> if you did that to somebody, either they were going to come back at you. That dude did nothing. And that's yeah, what I, I, told, I told Ben. I said, as soon as I saw it, I go, it's a fucking work. You can't mush somebody and him not hit you. And this bitch didn't hit you. Well, well it wasn't a work. Oh, I'll, tell dude. You this. Oh, I'll tell you man. this. I wanted to punch him. Really, really, really. No, you bad. handled and it I, perfectly. You handled you know, it perfectly. I was this close. And the reason why I gave him the countdown, because they didn't get the whole thing on tape. This is what happened. I was so over as a heel that night. I mean, you saw the people giving me the number one yeah, yeah. salute, right? They hated me, right? They hated me as much as Stevie hates me and even more. But point being is, <laughs> point being is, I did my job. Had a great match. Got the, the, the loudest heel heat all night. Loudest reactions, not to pull myself over, but I just wanted you guys to get that mindset. Sure, no, I know. What, I get out of That's the ring. The right. Yeah, I get out of the ring. There's some cholo standing in front of me trying to be a tough guy. All I said to him, I looked at him, I said, move. The fan moved. Then there's another guy standing behind him because he was only standing room only, right? There's no chairs. Very hipsterish type of environment, right? And the place was electric all night. Great, 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 great company, Bumps and Bruises. Great show, top to bottom. But regardless of the fact, there's someone else standing in front of me and he was smirking i said get the fuck out of my face and he did and then three feet later i walk into fucking goof troop and he's looking at me like he's gonna do something now do i know this guy personally no have i were we beefing a little on twitter i mean uh on facebook before here yeah because he's trying to get into the wrestling business you know and he's latching on to this company i think he's even training with spanky to be honest with you and um He's in my face. So I told him, get out of my face. I'm giving you to the count of three. So I was hoping he would try to put his hands on me so they could validate me punching him. But then when he didn't and he just stood there, I didn't want to hit him because I didn't want Mike Hawes to lose the building. Right. And start a riot. Sure. Okay, because if I didn't knock him out, <clears throat> he was going to hit me. And then a fight ensues, and all the guys in their mom's jeans and those beards holding the craft beers were either going to jump on or get out of the way and squeal like little girls because that's what they do. So... All I did was mush him out of my way, took a couple of steps. He did his little fucking stupid gun thing. And then when they shut off the video, what they didn't see is I gave him the fucking one gun salute and spit in his face. And they didn't show that part. Nice. And then I went into the locker room, and that was that. Now this guy's going all over social media. And the only reason I posted the video was basically just to show people this is what not to do at a show if you're a fan. Right. Because if you're a wrestler... And I'm not talking about a play wrestler. The three of the four of us are wrestlers, real men. If someone got in our face and they try to get it, get, get at us at a show, number one, it's disrespectful on a personal level. Number two, we all have a brand to maintain. No one's going to come see Ben Hamin, Stevie Richards, Big Sal, or Greek God wrestle and claim they're tough guys if they got their ass kicked in a hipster bar somewhere. Because that's never going to happen, number one. But if the opportunity incurs where this, the situation may go down, then we have to validate who we are, not as performers, but as men. And that's exactly what I did. Because I'm not going to let some punk get in my fucking face and try to dictate and hijack the show after myself and Douglas James wrestle for 15 minutes, me bleeding out of the mouth from a super kick. Absolutely not. Regardless of the fact, put him in his place. He goes on here, and he starts attacking all the fucking fans over and over and over again. Like a little 16-year-old girl on a fucking social media. He's trying to work his way into the business. Well, the problem is, now he's worked his way into a fucking shoot. Because if I see his ass at a show, and he gets in my face again, I have no choice but to knock him out now. So it is what it is. So did you say you wouldn't sell a Stevie kick or a super kick? I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> no, I said I was bleeding from a kick. Oh. From yeah. Stevie, Stevie, I, would never, no, I would never do that. Would never yeah, do that. And I love you. I love you, Papa Don. I love you, too. <laughs> Well, hey, you know I'm, what? I don't know what this guy, uh, you know, in that situation that you said that it was a shoot and it wasn't set up or a work or even that you guys were working together in any way. This guy's an MMA fighter. What's he going to do when he goes back to his dojo? It's punk. Cause, no, I'm just saying that that's a, that's a real thing, man. When you, even when you just lose a fight, you know, yeah. an MMA fight and you go back to like an American top team, you got to face some of those guys. And especially if you got punked out by supposedly what they would call a fake wrestler. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the whole yeah. thing. He didn't respect our business. You could see that he wanted to fucking stand there, like, let's do a little showdown face off. I'm going to get my oh, shit you're over. And yeah. Looking like fucking Juan Cena out there, fucking, you know, a knockoff. And, and Sal said he'd stick that grenade straight up his fucking ass and pull the pin fucking, on it. I would have choked him out with that fucking chain and then shoved that grenade up his ass. <laughs> so, oh, you, you know. Grenade too? Yeah, oh, he, he had a fucking. Like a little, Bitch. Thug life fucking huge oh. chain that he got from Lowe's and fucking put a fake ass grenade on the fucking gimmick. Wouldn't it be funny if it was like a real one and pop it on, just pull, just pull the fucking life. trigger and kick him in the balls? I mean, that would have done a great deal for humanity. But, dude, here's the first thing. You're fucking with a New York guy and you're a soft ass Cali fucking snowflake fanboy fuckface. I don't care what MMA school you go to. You you you've lost your fucking mind, or you've never been to the East Coast, obviously, because you never fuck around with anybody in New York like that. You never pu- pull anybody's punk card like that. You're gonna get fucking pie faced. Now you look like a cunt, and you got to go back to your fucking dojo and practice fucking sweep the leg Johnnies all day long. But the reality is, you got no fucking clout. You didn't respect our business, so why should we respect yours? You're probably a laughing stock over there because you fucking want to look like a total douchebag and you got fucking punked out by a by a wrestler instead of if you were really training with spanky spanky should be fucking promoing your ass right now for going into business for yourself trying to take fucking spotlight think you're fucking over as a greenhorn you're a stupid bastard yeah kids run in pal there it is yeah Yeah, get the well where's that well (laughs) get that well get get rogan out here yeah, but I mean, you know, if Spanky is training him, he's obviously at least smartening him up to what he should be doing. And hopefully this guy, yeah. I mean, his MMA career is probably, probably if not over. It's GGP a... versus Goof Troop, Starcade 84. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're both going to hop in the, the time machine. He's one of your three wishes. Going to work at uh, oh, Green, Greensboro. And that was the thing. Like, I got on today. Like, the first thing I asked Ben, I said, Tell me that's a fucking work with GGP on the video. And he's like, no, bro, it's not. And I immediately got hot because I said, you know, <laughs> not for nothing. And this is not a knock on GGP because this, this has made me laugh. And actually, GGP telling that what happened has made me less hot than I was earlier. Ben, how mad was I? You oh. Dude, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not even going to call you to like two minutes before because you do your best stuff in the first 12 yeah. minutes off camera. So I was fucking, dude, I was hot. He was hot, bro. I wanted to fucking kill him. And I'm like. Here he comes over because I'm like, he's a foot taller than GGP and he's trying to stand over him, get all fucking big in his face and fucking GGP mushed him right in the fuck, right the fuck off camera. And this bitch didn't do shit. I'm like, where we go, you know, growing up where we did, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. If somebody did that to you, you had to come back. You had to fucking knock that dude out because you basically just got your fucking skirt pulled up and your ass shown on camera exactly he's fucking hollywood tough guy bro there's no it, man that's it you don't you fuck with the horseman and, and i'd be goddamn if you did it if the fuck right, well, if, if any other two of us were there let's do the right thing let's not give this guy any more fucking clout or any more fucking notoriety yeah, no let's sell, move no on sell. And, and worry about the the, <laughs> the the conspiracies of the world and fuck this guy and if we see if i see him and he tries anything, I'll drop him. Yeah. I'll drop him like a fucking bad habit. Look, man, I don't play. Who, I don't play. Who's Not worse, Sasquatch or Goof Troop? They want to know. Sasquatch is at least a fucking good guy. Sasquatch is harmless, dude. Yeah. And, and, and his girlfriend's good looking. So at least yeah. just after we beat him up, you know. Sasquatch just throws rocks at the camp and you never see him. <laughs> Goof Troop shows up and just shits the bed. Oh, shit. That's a good one. All right, one more, and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, <clears throat> wrestling Conspiracies, hello, Horseman. I'm a new listener and have been really been enjoying your shows. This may be a little lengthy, so I wouldn't expect you to read this on the show. Well, too fucking late. Uh, CJ Cobra Commander 84. Uh, a quick backstory for me that ties into the subject. I've been a skeptic pretty much my whole life, and I was fascinated with shows like Sightings and Unsolved Mysteries growing up. I would borrow books from the library on UFOs, cryptozoology, serial killers, and the occult, etc., Lost interest in it for a while, but uh, what sparked up my interest on conspiracies was the Benoit murder-suicide. I remember sitting at my computer browsing the internet and saw breaking news that the Benoit family were found dead. 
Over the course of that Monday evening, it turned out to be a murder-suicide by him, and yet WWE continued with their tribute of him throughout the, their Raw episode. Fast forward eight to nine years later, I see all these theories of what happened, ranging from Kevin Sullivan using satanic rituals to hex or curse the family and causing Chris to snap to Billy Jack Haynes claiming Vince McMahon put a hit on the family after Chris discovered their child Daniel was a love child of Nancy and Vince. Uh, my curiosity peaked when I ordered this book, uh, Amazon link, uh, and I wanted to see exactly what is known about this whole thing. <clears throat> the book doesn't have, leave you with much closure, goes into detail about Benoit and his life leading up to the event, as well as the detail of the scene, points out a lot of strange events during that time leading uh, that led one to believe WWE actively tried to cover things up. Was curious what your guys' thoughts are on this, and can you guys check out the book? Because a lot of flags come up over the course of reading it that the book is something beyond a brain damage wrestler snapping. Sorry for the long-winded email. I'm sure you guys know it's not always easy to explain these topics in a few sentences. As Jesse always says, stay vigilant. Uh, Chris Jones at Chris F. And Jones on Twitter. You like that one, Chris Sal? Chris Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stay right, vigilant. Um, do it, but I don't want Stevie to make fun of me. <laughs> I want you to do it. I want Stevie to do make it. fun of you. You pussy. Do it. Do it. Come on, man. I won't. I promise. No, yeah, you're gonna make fun of me, so it doesn't matter. So <laughs> Just go do ahead. it. Continue on. I'm not. I'm never doing impersonations. Where's Shawn Michaels? Stay vigilant, yeah. Sean Connery. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what, if, what if Shawn Michaels did it? <laughs> it would probably sound really stupid. A fog in Shawn throat. Michaels would have seen the guys coming, no matter what. <laughs> He's always vigilant. Yeah. Um, the one thing you point out there that I don't think we covered in our episode, which we did uh, cover this on the celebrity murder episode back this spring. So if you haven't listened to that, I know you're a new listener. You definitely one you want to check out. We cover that. Uh, the, the Benoit murders, also uh, the Chester Bennington. Um, I don't know what you want to call it, murder, suicide, uh, conspiracy. I don't know if we cover, uh, we cover, uh, Kurt Cobain on that as well. We don't cover Chris Cornell, I don't think, but, uh, um, so very interesting show. One of our, our most listened to, um, what you pointed out, what stuck out to me and I'll ask you uh, these guys, what stuck out to you out of that whole email? The Vince McMahon love child. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, that's I've Vince's kid. That I haven't heard that either. Wait, wait, wait. That Vince McMahon, that the kid. Daniel is Vince McMahon. The Daniel's Vince McMahon's kid? No, it's not. Did it look just like Benoit? I don't know. I never met I the kid. Oh, dude. I don't believe that's bullshit. Look, well, do I think Benoit's But, Benoit you know, it's, it's out there as a conspiracy. I mean, that's our job to chop things down if you say it's bullshit no, no, because... I yeah. think it's bullshit because if you look at the kid, he looked just like Benoit. Okay. Just, same thing with his older kid. That's weird you know? gap tooth and everything. I don't know about the gap tooth. <laughs> All I'm saying is it looked like him. No, I mean, after fucking Benoit beat the shit. Oh, stop. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. I don't think he killed him. Well, I mean, uh, going into it, if you listen to our show, we talk about in Jericho and Chavo's timeline and the text that came through and just strange things about letting the dogs out. Also, where Nancy's body was supposedly found is moved three different times right, from right. A, a den in a study, from a bedroom floor to the bed itself. Uh, Bible placement, uh, well, we toxicology that, uh, reports of Chris, Benoit. Chris's body, even though they it was hung, it was uh, at a position that he couldn't have got himself into. Right. And then yeah. all these wine bottles and beer cans laying around. And then they do the toxicology and he has no alcohol in his system. Yeah, none. So... Uh, you know, Cosby math, Cosby math alone will get you three to ten. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that's what we've got here. Absolutely. Um, we appreciate you becoming a new listener, but definitely go back and check out that episode. Tony Schiavone's love child. It could be at this point, really. That'd be enough to make me snap, I think. Schiavone's banging my old lady. Um, but, uh, yeah, hey, man, banging his old lady saying the line, this is the greatest episode. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go fans. We're going to be back next week. We'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, you know, but, uh, there, there is a lot that sticks out, uh, that doesn't line up with the official story on this one, um, uh, from him being paranoid beforehand and people knowing about it. You know, what I found was the most interesting shoot on this was Hornswoggle has a lot of like really like timeline based and logic Weird. based things. Yeah, the the fact that he used to drive all over the place cuz mm -hmm. he never went he never went the same way twice to mm -hmm. go home. 
And he would go, you know, whenever he drove, he took a different route because yep. he was like, they're following me. Oh, Chris Benoit. Yeah, some they believe well, some people every, say some hitman or whatever. Every, yeah, every, I every time. Horse, well, I thought you thought you meant horse yeah, horse. No, <laughs> horse <laughs> <or> horse <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he. Uh, Probably Stevie. <laughs> he was going to fucking kidnap and put him in the band factory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Stevie, what did I see you posting yeah, some some he people? Didn't deny it. He's like, <laughs> there are some people in China That's doing not... the band workout. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. I'm I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to be banned for some reason because China is like an enemy or something. <laughs> but your social media there, score, Michael. Now, now, the Benoit thing. I was there in uh, Corpus. Oh, I got an echo now. They're shutting me down because I'm about to tell a story. Chris's house <laughs> is what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah, I was at Chris's house. No, I was actually in on the road with WWE that weekend. We were in Corpus Christi when all this stuff went down. Then we went to the next town. Uh, there's the the um, Corpus Christi, I think, was Monday for Raw when they did the thing, or Whoa. that's where the paper, that's where the ECW pay-per-view was supposed to be. I'm not sure exactly the towns, but the Sunday was the ECW pay-per-view, and then... Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. They got him. They got him. They got him. That's it. That's they it. They got me. They you got you big time, together. brother. Jesus, Corpus man. Christi, what happened? Chris's corpse. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. That's exactly how it works. Jesus. Dude, what it. the fuck, GGPP man. went up there, and then he shut him down. He ran right back. Holy shit. Oh, he was turned, turned off the lights. You turned the lights on, and you shut Stevie's off. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm. It, I've heard things like, like, I remember that, like, everybody was pretty upset because they announced it at ringside that, you know, they didn't know what was going on, but they knew that they were, all three of them were gone, that they were all dead at this point. I think yeah. on, this was this was Sunday afternoon, if not Monday. I believe it was Sunday because they had time to make the tribute show for Monday Night Raw. Right. The Yeah, the it was definitely the day before first, Raw. First of all, when I walked away from that, it was not more than five or ten minutes uh, that Val Venus came up to me and he said, hey, dude, I heard Chris did it. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, at this point, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm into my conspiracy theories, but I wasn't, like, thinking in terms of this. And he was like, no, dude, Chris did it. And then as time went on, and I think it wasn't even until after TV that, that the news started kind of trickling in. So that, that Monday Night Raw thing happened. Now, this is the, the thing where there was different stories going all around because for Val to come up to me and have that kind of information that soon, I was like, that's fucking strange. And if you ever stop K Fave enough so you can come on and talk about it, uh, then what leads me to believe looking back on it, hindsight being 2020, is when did they know that it didn't go down the way that they right. said it went down at ringside? And did they go forward? Because because Regal did a very interesting interview that Papadon talked about before that it's fucking really odd talking about Benoit and not kind of like he was saying that it was basically he knew that Chris did it, right, Papadon? It was very cryptic. Uh, I'm not going to say that he knew Chris did it because I don't want to allege anything of that. That's what he was will. But it looks like he knew something everyone else didn't maybe about Chris's past because they're friends and he realized maybe something caught up with Chris. I don't know. Well, I just though his demeanor, did, his expression. What? His, sorry, his, just to clarify that. Did you believe that that is <clears throat> something? When you say something caught up with Chris, does that allude to the people following him home and possibly somebody ringing the doorbell, like some hitman, some some bag man that he owed money to, or something along it, those lines? Who, who knows? It could be that. It could be. It could be a million things. It could be people. He got into a fight with in the bar. Maybe he fucking knocked out the wrong guy and that guy was connected. You never know. Yep. Maybe, you know, I mean, maybe the guy he bought his gear from, not wrestling gear, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe something went down wrong with them. He owed them money. I mean, who knows? I have no idea. All I'm saying is, as a father, and from what I understand, um, everyone s swore that, Benoit was infatuated with his son. He loved him like nothing else. There's no way a father would ever kill his son, especially a child. Mm. No fucking way. Special unless, needs, special needs child. Regardless of the fact, I just unless this guy went shit back crazy. But even if he did go shit back crazy on his wife, 
There's no way he would do that to his son. I just, I think something happened mm. and he found him there. Or he caught, or he came home, or something happened and all three got, got taken out and they left him last mm. to watch them, die, you know, to watch what happened and then make it look like it was a double homicide, then a suicide. Well, then uh, what Moses saying that Jericho did a, an episode with Benoit's sister-in-law. And while uh, while back is really weird. She said he was hung from yeah the hung from the seat, but he had all the plates on his lap. So. But what about what about the fact that you know supposedly Nancy kinda, was dead for X amount of time, right, and then day. he and the son yeah. were like you know the last. Oh well, I guess I got to do it because I'm not going down for this. I'd rather have my whole. I'd rather Kaiser Soze this shit and take out my whole family, you know, instead of instead of. Uh, having to make him live through that without his mom and being special needs and never understanding like is more of like a mercy type thing in his mind. It's very interesting all the way around uh, with the, you know, for us as a conspiracy horseman, the fact that the story changes, the fact that the timeline changes, that wrestlers like us who know a work a mile away and are picking out certain aspects of things just one or two of those things is enough to throw us off the trail of whatever the official story is. And I know we're going to get a lot more about this because the movie's going to come out in 2019, 2020, I believe. Uh, I think it's scheduled for the spring or summer. So um, it'll be, it'll be an interesting look at things to see what they say is the official. If they do make it look like, Oh, what if with all of these different things, or if they're going to actually stick to one story, I'm I'm anxious to see what that uh, looks like. So it should be, uh, I'm sure uh, next year will be a lot of Chris Benoit talk. What happened? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I uh, they said you did it. They said you're the guy. They said you knew too much. The pizza man showed up. I had to go. Nice. Open the door. Well, y'all, 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 y'all. It's time for pizza, infidels. Uh, I'm I'm banned off Facebook. It's been too much of a goddamn day dealing with all this but i want to thank my conspiracy horseman brothers for having my back uh dude when i got booted out of that chat that was really the worst thing like i felt like i was like you know kicked out of the spaceship floating away from you guys slowly as a, <laughs> as i you know had no ability to grasp on anything for a as minute you there sandra bullocked back to earth exactly but i, I pulled a, a princess leia and i fucking came right back in that bitch there's nobody stopping me so, uh, but, uh, but, uh, thank you guys for having my back and, uh, you know, always, you know, I, I just want to let you know, I appreciate it when it comes to this shit and it'll be interesting to see, hopefully, uh, none of it trickles down on you guys and fucks with your business. I really don't want that to happen. I'd feel really bad. I just don't have any answers. I wish we were a step closer. I feel like we just kind of talked it out tonight and I appreciate that, but there's no hard evidence of leaning one way or another of which which avenue to go down. So we're yeah, still kind of in the middle of this. Those other cunts one down. way or another, yeah. they're gonna get you. They're gonna <laughs> get you, get you, get you. Yeah, yeah. I say we just fucking Jay and Silent Bob those cunts anyway. Yeah. Oh, I would love to so much. Well, we'll do it all, man. Uh, they're they're gonna bury themselves. Cons- conspiracy horsemen. We don't back down. We'll fucking pie face you. Doesn't matter if we're at bumps and bruises. Uh, you know, bruise cruise or uh, dynasty next weekend. We'll we'll do what we gotta do. So, uh, you want to step to us? You better come correct with it because you're gonna get a face full. Uh, big sell a lot. Smiling, enjoying it. What's going on, buddy? With you? Oh, yeah, man. It's uh, now. You know, guys. So far, uh, we just recorded uh, last night. Yep. So well, that Chuck send that to you probably tomorrow. No, I got it already. I'm gonna put it oh, up tomorrow. Shit, morning. did he? Yep. Look at that motherfucker working. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we we're just recording. We're having a good time, and I got all the guys are very cool. Got a lot of the crossover fans, obviously. Every you know, yeah. sending us all kinds of shit. So we're having a lot of fun with it. Um. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're just gonna keep making shit for your your. Uh, for Hami Media. Yeah, a lot, man. I appreciate you guys all at the, the, the Horror strong. Junkyard. Where can people send you guys emails, uh, suggestions for Horror uh, Junkyard? The Horror Junkyard uh, at ProtonMail.com. That is the CERN secure server at <laughs> the Horror Junkyard. Hey. At ProtonMail. What's the matter? Why don't you talk to your boys at CERN and get Bryn's fucking account back up? Yeah, what the fuck, Sal? You, so? you know what? the beginning of the fucking show somebody i can't remember who said i think it might have been paul or p marzoli said why don't we just 
get the hadron collider. So now everybody wants to fucking run a CERN. You guys shit talk the whole time. <laughs> no, now you're coming facts, up. My friend. Now you want a favor, he says. Now everybody <laughs> wants favors from CERN. And uh, you, can okay. do, you can do a big sale of favor. Go to prowrestlingtees.com slash SEG shirts. Follow yeah, and again, I, I Again, I fucking not lazied out. I've just been a mark job. I've yeah. been having to redo the drawings I did. I did like three of them, and I have to redo them again. So, uh. well, his horseman shirt's up there. If you guys have sales, yeah. your favorite of the conspiracy horsemen, buy from him. They were not going to feel bad. We were happy for all of us. Uh, and you can always follow him at Dead No Save on Twitter and uh, join the Free Ben Hameen Revolution hashtag. Free ben yeah, I'm Hameen. sure. I'm sure I'll be banned soon too. I've been <laughs> fucking Revolution nonstop. Money. We're taking donations. That's no, right. We're getting them. donations the whole show. Yep. Church of Stevie. Uh, yeah, we want to say big thanks to uh, obviously uh, Triple D gave us a, a three thousand bits tonight. Theory Girl with a thousand. Smokey Baker four hundred and Dirty Turnbuckle and everybody else. Uh, you know, I haven't uh, Theory clicked, Girl. Clicked yeah, the drop well, down. Yeah, yeah. Fucking... Everybody, you guys with this new bitch shit. We're trying not to mark out too hard, but uh, muchas gracias. Garbage X Edge Brent Logan Armand twenty seven hundred Domino eight fifteen XR Butcher Paul Marzola. Huge uh, supporters, obviously, of everything we do at uh, Hameen Media. Glad to be back in the chat room with you guys and uh, glad in the Hameen Media discussion group, all the support you guys have been throwing uh, for me that way. It's uh, been really humbling today, especially in a day of confusion to keep me going, so I appreciate it, man. Uh, Stevie, what's going down with you, bro? Well, as you said earlier, uh, the people all around the world are using the Resistance Man program, even uh, – the enemies of the United States of America, <laughs> the dastardly Chinese that own us, uh, they want to own a piece of the program as well. It's like their gold. It's like their nuclear option. It's like their fiat currency. <laughs> They're, um, but I want to thank Steve uh, in the uh, in the Steve Richards Fitness Group. He has uh, he has uh, kind of been an evangelist to to the program over there in China. So pretty cool. He's an ex worker. He's been an indie worker, and he ended up in China. I love to. It's cool to know his story, what brought him over there. I think teaching, I think he's a teacher. Right. So he's over there. And a lot of people, we we're getting orders today, getting the steady amount of orders over uh, the past few weeks. So that group is growing and, and people are interacting. So I'm very, very happy with it, especially since I put the free hip workout video. So once again, if you've ordered the program, please email me, Stevie Richards Fitness at gmail.com or directly through the Stevie Richards Fitness.com website. And I'll check your order, and then I'll send you the link to the workout video. Uh, and if you haven't ordered, there is a free work, uh, hit workout video with every order. And uh, check that out. Go to stevierichardsfitness.com. Uh, also, at Steve Richards Fit. Well, no, it's not Steve Richards Fit. I've been saying that word so often. Just at Stevie Richards on Instagram for now until I get banned. And also, <laughs> at BW Stevie on Twitter until I get banned. And also ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Stevie Richards until they unbook me. And then <laughs> all that different stuff. You know, man, this church of Satan, they are. They, they are, are powerful, they are, but I don't think you, any. You're going to blame them. They didn't do it to you. It was the other little cunts. They didn't do I don't it know. As, as yeah, many, it, was actually, the, it, was, it was a fan of the conspiracy horse, man, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's the weird part. As many as many pictures as you have with your shirt off, the church of Satan, you've just melted their heart. You, they, they couldn't uh, stay away. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we, 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 didn't we invite them to come on? We absolutely did, and they fucking faved. So you're a bunch of pushy ass bitches, and your fake dark lord ain't shit to me. So uh, bring it on. Uh, <laughs> we, hey, Stevie, when are you moving into Catholic town? Oh, my God. That was the fucking best. <laughs> also, can I ask you a question, Stevie? The guy in China with the bands, did he get a family discount because his nephew's in your basement? And they the bands? <laughs> no. I yeah. asked him. I asked no. him. How. I asked him if, uh, the, if the people who were using the bands had strong hands and fingers. And uh, <laughs> I'm getting back. I, I, you know. Go on, go on, go into the group. You can make. Here's what I think. Out of those pictures, dude. I, I hey, I say jump on it. Let's get with Apple and everybody in the Apple iPhone factory. They get five minute break every hour to do Stevie Richards Fitness. I think that'll be a, a, a thing, a great partnership going forward. I I honestly think that the bands would be stronger suicide nets than the material. The that I think so. Bounce them right, bounce them right back it, up. That was my, I was just gonna tell you. <laughs> Are we fucked get, up? 
all of us. I don't think they need them. Stevie Richards Fitness will release those endorphins. They'll feel better. They'll look better. They'll feel better about all their friends and oh, body image. Yeah, yeah. And there'll be less suicides all the way around at the Apple factory if they and if they team would, with Stevie Richards think Fitness. About the, think about the marketing. You could say, get in on the ground floor with Stevie Richards Fitness. <laughs> you won't reach the – you actually will never reach the ground floor. <laughs> You'll never yeah. hit rock bottom. Oh, it's SRS Jesus. Fitness. It's not that oh, yeah. oh, By the way, I, I, if people, if you want to see a conspiracy video about Apple, I have a, I have a video up on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe there, uh, where the title is "I'm going to smarten you up about about Apple," and it's, it's really good. It's fun about that. So, people got really angry. <laughs> well, they, they're Apple fanatics. Well, it's nice knowing you. You're not going to be on YouTube anymore. You offended the masses. Yeah. And uh, the the infidel crusher of the week himself, GGP, proud of you, buddy. Glad to see you, coast to coast, doing your thing, Ronan champion. Congratulations! Oh, that's right. Yes, new yeah. Ronan champion. Yeah, thank you, my friend. Thank you're welcome. You. We're we're glad and you could do still, a run. We're still we're still tag champs, right? Yeah, fuck yeah, I got both belts. All right, so <laughs> there you go. I'm a dual champion. Yeah, that's right. I really I love the fact that we forget to put ourselves over. Like you, you forgot legitimately that you were Ronan Tim, the Ronan Tim. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the champ. champ. That's, what, that's because that, that's because when we're on here, when we're on here, it's all about us. Yeah, I'm a conspiracy. Well, I'm not wrestling. Fuck. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember a fucking email to put myself over. You don't, you don't remember your fucking Ronan champion, world champion. He's got the belt on right now. He forgot about <laughs> He's it. And shit. The belt. Uh, oh man. So it was a good show, at Ronan. So. uh it was fun times. Great match with uh, Mick Drake and uh, Alex Chamberlain. Unfortunately, Mike Orlando wasn't cleared, so he couldn't couldn't. Uh, he didn't take the uh, Scientology test, or no, <laughs> no, his knee, and oh, uh, oh. and he wasn't cleared, so he couldn't make it. So I did some Steiner math, and the percentage fell in my way. So I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-three and so the, th the third percent. I yeah. read on the internet that you are going to do the Burt Reynolds, Shawn Michaels championship picture with the fucking nah, belt yeah. over the gimmick. <laughs> nah, I ain't going to do that. On a fur rug, you're not doing that. Nah. <laughs> I just, I don't, I, I, well, was it too good for you, Sean? Why did you do it, Sean? <laughs> yeah, <Respect>. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Where can they see you this weekend, GGP? <laughs> laughing at the Sean Michaels impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, this weekend, I will be at NYWC on the 29th. Um, I'm in some eight-man tag match. Uh, myself, Blake Morris. Uh, who else is in the match? I think Alvin Alvarez and somebody else. I don't know. I don't know who my, my – my, my, I'm taking a guess. I, I'm sorry. I just didn't Mike get a Mondo, to DJ Hyde, uh, and, big, big O, and um... – No, no, no. Versus, <laughs> versus the, 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 uh, the, the Beer Belly Bandits. Okay. So uh, – it's going to be all ha ha and gaga, but it's yeah, man. Fun. Easy night, eight man tag. So uh, hop on on NYWC, support them. Awesome arena, awesome locker room full of talented guys. The Ronin champ, the conspiracy horseman, tag team champ is going to be there. Support GGP at Greek God Papadon on Twitter. Uh, Greek oh, yeah. God Papadon on uh, Facebook. Greek God Papadon on, on Facebook while it still lasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on uh, <laughs> ProWrestlingDees.com. Backslash Greek God Papadon on YouTube page. Greek God Papadon. And uh, if you guys want to send some donations and not bits, you could all just hit me up on PayPal at Papadon595 at Yahoo.com. <laughs> the classic Yahoo or Church of Stevie uh, if you shit. want to. I can't it's... do that. Stevie's charging 66% interest. Uh, <laughs> they take 66% 6 of the donation. So it's, a, it's all going to the roof fund at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, but uh, it all needs a new roof. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can find my new Mark character, Ben Dewar, and that's two R's, D-U-E, double R, infidels, uh, on uh, Facebook. Uh, ben Hameen, we'll see if he gets uh, out of the black site if they if they let him go or if he's truly in Guantanamo Bay of uh, Facebook for right now. So appreciate all you guys. Uh, there was so many interactions and so many uh, retweets and um, the hashtags of modern day book burning, hashtag free Ben Hameen on Twitter. Uh, can't thank you. T-shirt. Yeah, that's it right there. They actually want me to do a, a Shea, uh, the Shea shirt, but with my face with the gimmick there. So I might design that if I get a free <laughs> minute. <laughs> um, how's, the, how, how's the Conspiracy Horseman Metallica logo I gave you about yeah, 27 years ago? It's gone. good. Go I got it. I actually have that, uh, I think, on here somewhere. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's, so it's it's tough to find Ben Hameen on uh, Facebook, but you can always find him at Ben underscore Hameen on Twitter, Hacker Hameen on Instagram, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Ben Hameen if you want to support the uh, lawyer fund as we go to uh, Facebook uh, <laughs> <laughs> litigation. Well, and if you're a lawyer out there and you want to work pro bono on this case, <laughs> yeah. just hit up Hameen, let him know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, or pro, work Sonny Bono, hit a tree. Or hit, so you, hit pro uh, boner, hit up do, Stevie. You take... Take the picture of Vince with a beret and call it Shape Al. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm stealing that Shape Al. Yeah, the revolu- <laughs> it's the women's revolution. Shape Al. Yeah, let's get out there. Um, but, you know, we, we appreciate you guys. I know tonight was more about us and uh, just kind of vibing. But, uh, hey, we're living in the reality right now of uh, some weird possibly First Amendment crackdown or – uh, snowflake social justice warrior being a, a little bitch but either way it's uh affecting your business it's affecting our business and uh, we want to talk about it because uh, it's something that needs to be put out there and aired out uh you know it's open books here at uh, the conspiracy horseman i appreciate all my my brothers my co-hosts all my producers at hackerhameen.podbean.com Truth seekers like Crow Triple Seven, uh, Billy Ray Valentine, my my co-host for the Impact Attack, Big Ray, and uh, Andrew Bello. Obviously, all these guys. Strangler Steve uh, couldn't wouldn't be here. Couldn't be here without you, Jargo Vickery, Volts. All those guys working their asses off. Appreciate you. And this has been your Conspiracy Horseman. We'll see if we're back here next week, unless Twitch decides to ban us two infidels. Y'all. <laughs> Oh, it was a good run.